Hey everybody, it's Bust with Battles with Bust number 297, and today we're doing battle in the Beta Open Season Tournament. <laughs> let, me, let me get that right. You take all those words, mix them around however you want, that's what we're going to be doing. It is the competitive season, the competitive beta season open tournament. There we go. I think we got all the words right that time. And so uh, the way I typically handle these best of three videos are uh, I, I don't talk about the decks in depth. Uh, if you want to see in-depth guides on any of these decks, you can just scroll backwards in the channel a little bit. Uh, we've played all of them uh, multiple times throughout the course of the channel, and so that uh, content is out there for you. We'll just talk about the uh, kind of intricacies and oddities to the deck that we're we're bringing to the event, uh, and then we'll talk about what we're expecting out of this deck uh, in the best of three format. And so if you're wanting to just skip ahead to the gameplay, we're going to be playing Sunburn. That's the Katarina Leona uh, aggro deck. We're going to be playing Brown Elites. That's our Elites deck with Rite of Negation in it. And then we're going to be playing uh, Callista Nocturne, Mist Wraith, Allegiance, Harrowing, Soul Cleave style deck. Uh, and so to get those pulled up, talk about them a little bit more. Uh, first and foremost, we're playing Sunburn. This is the Katarina, Katarina Leona aggro deck. We played it in Seasonals. I play it all the time. This is one of my favorite decks, if not my favorite deck of all time in the game. Uh, I think it's absolutely fantastic. I, I don't think the nerfed Katarina really hits this deck as hard as it does a deck, say, like uh, Opulent Foyer or Red Gwen, as to where Katarina is the real uh, kind of like catalyst to success with those decks, as to where she's much more uh, of a utility role in a deck like this. And so I still feel like she plays very fantastically in here. Uh, the thing with me in terms of the Katarina Leona deck is I think the all-in aggro style decks aren't really the way to go. Uh, so we're not playing Legion Saboteurs. We're not playing Reveler's Feasts. Uh, I look to go a little bit more mid-rangey uh, with the addition of the Solari Priestess. And so the other kind of oddities you may see in here are going to be the Shunpo. Uh, I really like having the extra rally. Uh, and then the Nox and Telstones as the last bit uh, of interactivity, you get a lot of uh, utility out of this one, whether or not it's just the surprise combat trick, surprise removal spell, uh, or even sometimes the weapons of the lost. And I think that's, uh, I'm, I'm kind of interested in how I feel about this. This tournament, unlike seasonals, is not open deck list. And so the opponent doesn't know uh, that we're going to have access to Nox and Telstones. I, I don't know if that's better for us in the sense that uh, we got that gotcha factor, or if it's a little worse than us, than an opponent having to play around a one-of copy in the deck. Uh, not entirely certain, but I am certain that I'm quite happy uh, with the Nox and Telstones. Very powerful in here. Uh, deck number two, uh, we're calling this one Brown Elites. Uh, we were uh, initially playing Pink Elites with the Denies. I preferred Rite of Negation over Deny, and so we switched to the brown color. Shreem is kind of brown, right? I guess it's technically yellow, but uh, brown is where you get poop jokes. And so uh, we, <laughs> we are calling them the Brown Elites, and that's what we are uh, looking to bring out here as our kind of mid-rangey offering. And so again, it has the Rite of Negation. Uh, this really helps in the match matchups to where elites struggles. And so uh, as elites is playing against something, say like uh, Tristana uh, Shadow Isles to where they can just flood the board with fairies, never take any damage. Uh, and then at the end of the day, just kill you with like a 14 damage atrocity. Being able to cancel out that atrocity is huge, but uh, it also works out nicely against decks like Feel the Rush. If we're playing against the Mist Wraith decks with the Harrowings, uh, or even if it's just popping a vengeance, uh, it's a very strong utility style spell uh, that we don't have to sacrifice too much to add into the deck. And so otherwise, not too many oddities in here. We are playing the King Jarvan, we're playing the actual Jarvan, uh, we, and then uh, uh, the one copy of Succession to kind of help smooth out the early game draws. Uh, last deck, we're going to be playing uh, Nocturne Callista, the, the Mist Wraiths, the Soul Cleave, the, the Harrowing, uh, whatever you will. Uh, this uh, The only kind of oddities we have in this one is we're playing the Legionary Charge. That's a fantastic combat trick that also uh, draws a Nocturne. Uh, and then if you watched our previous video, we are kind of considering maybe playing Elise, uh, decided against it, just staying with the, uh, the raw power that you get out of Nocturne. And so those are the decks, uh, the, the kind of ideas and thoughts and what we're going to be looking to do in this best of three uh, setting is, you know, the, this meta is is very wide open. Uh, if you were kind of with us with the previous seasonals in the space to where uh, Aatrox Kane was undoubtedly the just best deck in the format, uh, this is a, a pretty balanced format right now to where I don't feel like anything is really running away with the meta. Uh, and so I don't want to get 
really creative with the lineup. I don't want to play triple aggro. I don't want to play triple control. Uh, I don't want to try and target down a, a single deck. Uh, I, I feel like uh, you, you just need to have you know, really kind of good matchups across the board because who knows what you're going to run into. And so uh, I feel like as the day kind of progresses, uh, if you're able to start off 5-0, whatever, you're going to start running into uh, higher quality opponents that do tend to like to play uh, triple control type strategies. Uh, but that's ultimately still just going to be a bit of a roll of the dice. And so I feel like our lineup is pretty balanced. We have the nice uh, uh, kind of aggro mid-rangey deck in Sunburn. We have the mid-rangey deck in uh, Elites. And then we have the much more kind of aggressive combo deck uh, coming out of the Mist Wraiths. I think it has a kind of nice balance to it uh, to where it doesn't just get completely smoked by a, a single archetype or strategy. Uh, but the the big thing that we have in mind that we're looking to actually come out and ban are going to be the Nora decks. Uh, we have that kind of highlighted up here in the top right. This is where we're just going to run into the majority of our problems. Uh, the Nora go wide strategies are traditionally really strong at just shutting down. Uh, things like Sunburn, just providing a bunch of blockers over and over again, it can shut down the elites, just block over and over and over again. Uh, and while it's not particularly great at blocking against the fearsomes, it does have the opportunity to portal out some bigger units. And I do suspect if we're going to run into Nora-based lineups, they're just going to ban fearsomes and we're not going to get to play it. And so uh, first and foremost, we're just looking to ban out Nora. But uh, I think the, the idea of Nora brings up kind of an interesting question as uh, Nora is a Bandal City Shadow Isles kind of deck. Uh, if you're looking to, well, I should say there's a variety of Nora decks that are Bandal City Shadow Isles. And uh, if that gets, you know, kind of taken, if you're looking to play either, you know, like Nora Vagar or Darkness or something, uh, how that space gets kind of uh, taken or used as we look towards one of the the new uh, big and exciting decks of the format in Timo Tristana. And so what I think we're going to look to see as if people are playing Bandle City Shadow Isles, it's going to be Timo Tristana. And then as that pushes them back towards a Nora deck, uh, Nora not playing with Vagar, I think that we're going to see uh, quite a bit of the, uh, the the Bilgewater version, the Twisted Fate one with the Curious Shell Folk. I think that's going to be kind of the breakout deck of the event. Uh, and so I want to be ready to ban that one. And so if we're in this space to where if you look at the Timo a Tristana matchup to where it's not particularly good for any of our decks. I feel like we have a bit of edge in this matchup now. I feel like the uh, the Katarina deck is different enough to where we aren't just playing um, uh, that super aggro version with Legion Saboteurs to where our, our win rate gets to tick up just a little bit. Our Elites deck can counterspell the uh, the atrocities with the right of negation, and then the fearsomes matchup, while not spectacular, is still winnable. And so that's kind of my my thought process here. Is I put Nora up on top. I do plan to ban the Nora decks. I don't suspect we're going to see a ton of Nora uh, Viego or Nora um, Vagar, but uh, I, I think that's going to kind of backdoor these into like Nora Swain. Uh, Nora Nar, that's the, the Lord Broadmain deck, or Nora Twisted Fate. All of those matchups are going to be terrible. We're just looking to ban those away while still be re being reasonable against Timo Tristana. And so as, you know, these decks probably have other uh, annoying shit, if you will, these lineups to where if they're playing Timo Tristana along with Nora, they are probably playing an additional annoying shit deck, uh, whether that's Annie Ezreal, Swain Twisted Fate, some version of Seraphine, some version of uh, Victor Control. Uh, I, I feel like those are more along the lines of decks that we can leave up. And then if opponent's in a more balanced strategy that's actually including one of these things, then we can potentially look to ban it if Nora isn't a, a part of the equation. And so that, that did make me want to, you know, kind of talk about some of the, uh, the, the lineups that you would come out and probably see. In terms of triple aggro coming in, I don't care. We're never banning an aggro deck in the event. The only time we're going to be banning aggro decks are if they bring three. If they bring three, then we'll just look to ban pirates. I don't think that that's a big deal. We have given up a bit of our strength in these aggro mirrors, uh, playing things like Rite of Negation and Elites, but I still feel like our lineup is strong enough against the remainder of 
uh, the aggro decks that we aren't actually giving up too much. Uh, the next one, when you say, uh, you know, hey, there's triple aggro, what do you think about triple control? And I think that this is going to be kind of an interesting space. Uh, that being, does the lineup include Rise? And I feel much, much better if uh, we're playing against lineups, lineups that have Rise in it. Uh, all of our decks are quite good against Rise. and He's kind of interesting in the sense that the answer to all of the control decks of the format is Rise. Rise is a super, super polarized champion. Uh, I'm really curious to the amount of Rise we'll see. I've seen a lot of Rise in the Daily Rumbles. Uh, not so much on the latter, but he's currently the most popular uh, champion in the game. And so uh, I do like that our lineup is, you know, if you say, okay, well, let's brew together this kind of like triple control lineup as to where we're going to play Rise, we're going to play Nora, and we're going to play something else. Uh, and then hopefully if we're up against uh, bad Rise matchups or something else uh, is enough to take off a game and then Rise doesn't lose both. Like, I, I think that that's a, a fairly reasonable uh, strategy in, in the sense that Rise just smokes so many other decks in the format, but uh, I think that we might be kind of okay in the sense that if the ag the the control lineups are bringing Rise, then we feel pretty good. If the balance lineups are bringing Rise, then we feel pretty good there as well. It's not a lineup that we're intending to target Rise with, but it's a lineup that's incidentally good against Rise. Uh, up next, you know, the, the, the other things that you have to kind of consider would be a balanced lineup turning up. And this is what scares me more than anything. If you're looking to say, bring Nora control, play a deck like Jax Orn, and then bring an aggro deck along with it, uh, the, the Jax matchups are pretty bad. And then the aggro matchups are pretty coin flippy. And so it doesn't really give us a, a good advantage there since we have to ban out the Nora, and this is the one that strikes me as being uh, the most challenging thing that we'll run into across the day. And so ideally, uh, Jax Orn has just kind of fallen off the map enough to where he won't be turning up. I haven't seen too much traction from uh, Grandpa Roji's uh, Nora, not Nora, Grandpa Roji's uh, Sharima Jax with, uh, with Sivir, and so hopefully that doesn't turn up as well. But this is the kind of thing that does bring me a bit of worry is a balanced lineup kind of similar to what we're doing. And then they have that mid-rangey deck in there that gives us problem. That's where our elites deck is kind of positioned, but uh, we do run into some potential issues there. Uh, last but not least, though, there is the idea of just uh, the good decks light up, and I think this will be okay. Uh, this is uh, the, the space that you would kind of run into in this thing. The, the place where you kind of like have some problems with the good decks lineups are if they're starting to include Gangplank Sejuani. And I don't think I put Gangplank Sejuani on the list here. The, the matchups with it aren't particularly good. And so uh, I, again, worry if you're just going to say, okay, well, I've pulled up the, 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 the tracking site and just picked up the top like three decks, then that's fine. We can handle that. That's got to be like a, a Rise deck, a Timo Tristana deck and something else. But if you kind of like break it down a little bit and think towards last seasonals as to where nobody was really excited to play Gangplank Sejuani, it didn't have any particularly good matchups, but it didn't have any bad ones. And it turns out uh, all of our matchups against it are just bad ones. <laughs> and so the, the Sunburn deck is okay, but the other ones are not. And so I, I worry about that to a degree, but not so much. I don't think we're going to see uh, loads and loads of that kind of just play the top decks of the meta and not really have kind of a cohesive strategy to go along with it. Again, my big worry is going to be these balanced lineups that also include jacks. And so those are the decks. That's what we're going to be doing battle with, but you know what we have to do before the battles begin. We got to go and pay the pay to win price. And so uh, the, the Leona deck, it is all accounted for. Everything is good in here. Everything is all premium. Everyone is skinned out. We're ready to go. In terms of the brown elites, we have to make up for that just a little bit here. We had a couple of cards along the way. Trusty, excuse me, Trusty Ramhound uh, is one. He's going to definitely be super elite now. But since we got away from the previous deck without any upgrades, I feel like we should come in and just upgrade Jarvan as well. And so this one, all premiumed, all ready to go. And, and it's pretty exciting as we run into the Soul Cleave deck. Uh, everything in here is premiumed and ready to go, except for the Soul Cleave. You can't turn this one premium. Uh, it's a bit of a disappointment, a bit of a disaster, but it is what it is. But to hopefully make up for it, uh, we're going to go arcade mode with our Nocturne. Uh, you know, Battle Boss Nocturne, Arcade Nocturne, whatever he's called. He's getting slightly less scary, uh, and so that definitely ups my mood. I don't like playing the scary skins. Nocturne's just scary on his own, you know, being some kind of 
demon mist or whatever. He's coming at us from the island of Lost. <laughs> and so definitely a little bit safer now that he has the flashy lights attached to him. And so you've seen the decks, you've seen the premiums, you've heard the strategy. Let's go ahead and jump on into battle. All right, so about to dive on in. And before we push the buttons and get going, I, I think this is interesting. I uh, didn't realize that this was in the gauntlet format to where you're just trying to get eight wins before you get three losses. I, I thought that this was going to be uh, more like uh, how the seasonals worked, where it was like a tournament that uh, every round started <clears throat> off the hour or such. And uh, it's not. It has this gauntlet format, which I think is, is amazing. This is fantastic. You can uh, play it across two days. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but you, you can. And uh, I, I think it's great since the sense, you know, I can play like two or three rounds and, and go take a dump and then play two or three rounds and uh, go and fix dinner and eat and come back and <clears throat> have the progress still be there and not be uh, constrained. Uh, I think that's fantastic and wonderful. And I think it's a great way to do it because the way I thought uh, that a lot of these events should work, there's, you know, kind of two things going to it in the terms of seasonals. Uh, I felt like everyone that got to seven wins should be able to play on the second day. Uh, that was the way that the uh, the Grand Prix structure worked in Magic, and I felt like that was very well done. With Magic, it was like, depending on the size of the event, of the event it would be like either the top 64 players or everybody with an X and 2 record. Uh, whichever was more players was the ones that would uh, make the second day. And I, I know that there are some considerations to that when you start trying to play single elimination on the second day, but I, I think you can kind of continue on like with the arena opens as to where uh, you play the second day until you have six wins or two losses or however it goes. And if you get that full six wins and you win the big prize, and I, I think further down the stream, further down the road, when you're dealing with like world's qualifiers and stuff, you can just have those events be a little bit bigger and uh, things work out just fine. And so I, I think this is a, a pretty great and fantastic format. Uh, pretty excited to, to jump on in. And so uh, the other thing before we dive in, I, I suspect this video is going to be pretty long. Uh, we'll be playing, you know, between uh, seven and ten rounds or so or eight and ten rounds or whatever. You know, it's probably going to be 20, 25 matches of gameplay. Figure they take about 10 minutes a game. Uh, that's going to get us to around a four hour video. And so I figure it's going to be, uh, you know, between two and a half and four hours long. Uh, if you want to sit through the whole thing and watch it all, soak it all in, fantastic. I love it. I'm glad you're here. Uh, but I know not everyone is going to do that. So if you do see a match that you particularly enjoyed, uh, just put a little note in the comment or something. Put a little timestamp on it so uh, as people uh, click through the video, they, they don't have to watch it all. They just get to pick and choose what they think is cool based on what you think is cool. Uh, and hopefully everyone will have uh, a little bit more enjoyable experience that way. And so if you want to watch it all, great. Uh, if you just want to kind of cherry pick through and, and watch some specific matches, that's great as well. And so with that out of the way, let's go ahead, jump on in. You got the Leona deck, the Brown Elites, the Cleaves. Let's get to it. Only two Noxus decks. What a, what a mistake. What a disaster. Should have just brought triple rear guard, right? Should have brought triple rear guard. <laughs> but let's see how it goes. I mean, I'm excited to have these events. It's been uh, it's been about a month, you know. <laughs> and so, uh, reasonable enough set here. And so, if we pull up our our handy dandy cheat sheet, uh, you can see Jax Orn is on here. This is one that we can kind of leave up and not feel too bad about it. Heimerdinger Jace uh, is over here to the left. This is another one that um, you know we're not. Uh, really kind of keen on banning. And then the last one being uh, uh, Victor uh, Master Yi, which I, I just don't worry about whatsoever. And so uh, I'm fine to leave pretty much any of these up. I think the one that will ideally just be banning out is going to be Jax Orn. Uh, I, I feel like we're, we're pretty strong against both of these kind of control deck style things. And this is the one that gives the most of our decks the most problems. All right, he says... No Nocturne for you. Not playing against any Soul Cleaves today. And let's go ahead and start things off with a little bit of Sunburn. Okay, Heimerdinger Jace coming at us from the start. Let's see. Reasonable start with the Crimson Pigeon. Try to find ourselves another aggro bro to go along with him. Oh, everybody turned up to the party. <laughs> so we're all here. Nice little aggro start. So with these, I, I like to lead out with the soldier. There's no 
real reason to start with the Crimson Pigeon. It's only going to deal two damage since we have all of the units for turn three, right? On turn three, we'll probably play the Sunhawk, stun whatever he has, and then still be able to uh, Crimson Pigeon for three attack. Let's see if he decides to open here. If he opens, I'm not opposed to trading, especially now that we just drew the Sun Guardian. We can just pivot a little bit. We can drop in... Uh, the Solari Shield Bearer, we can drop in the Crimson Pigeon, and then next turn we can play the Sun Guardian. Still have a pretty big collection of attackers. Oops. Math, math, those, math those numbers a little bit wrong, but we can, we can still get the Sun Guardian in and feel pretty good about it. People turn in this video, they say, oh, this bust guy's here. Can't even count to three. <laughs> but what do we got? Reasonable stuff, reasonable stuff. We're going to have to trade out our board for his board, but uh, we can refill pretty easily here. Just don't want him to have all this stuff on the board and get the opportunity to, to come out and grow. X-Tech Handler would have been particularly, na <clears throat> particularly nasty with all those friends on board. All right, but we get to start making a little bit of a tempo play here. We can drop in the Sunhawk, get the stun onto his blocker, follow up with the Crimson Pigeon, and then hopefully, now that we have this like Shunpo Decimate hand, we gotta we gotta start thinking about how we can finish this one off. We gotta get this one over with and done before he starts to pop off on us. Looks like he's gonna vengeance our Sun Guardian. That's okay. We get a nice nice five piece nugget running through here. I guess it would be worse. The, the the other consideration would be Piercing Light. This deck does tend to play Piercing Light as well. Uh, I would much rather it be Vengeance. Oh, Shock Blast. Okay. All right. Getting our big boy in. So I wouldn't suspect that he's got... Well, there, there's two ways to go about this. He either just doesn't have uh, Piercing Light, or he's going to open with it right now. And... Uh, as our Sun Guardian is about to get up to 6 health, you don't really want to have that 6 health bro on board uh, when, you're, when you're trying to play Piercing Lights. What do we got here? Flipped Jace comes on board. He chooses Quick Attack. That's fine. Uh, let's pick up the Priestess, see if we can't find a removal spell. We don't. A little disappointing in that. Uh, you can look towards Written in the Stars. It's... Kind of okay here. Uh, both Leona and Katarina are good next turn. My, my main concern with these is like the Golden Sister is just a little bit too slow and his board's a little bit too big. I, I think we're just stuck with the Written in the Stars. Uh, and then we can try with this turn uh, to both Shunpo and Legion Rearguard. I, I'm curious uh, how he goes about this round. If he uh, like really plans on attacking or not. It's probably just not super ideal for us. Let's written in the stars. Let's see who turns up. Katarina. Okay. She's ready to boom with all those stats. She says, no quietus on me today. Clad in shining sunlight. All right, and then see if we can't get the Katarina battles going. We're not able to... Uh, play Katarina on the flip side since we did play the Solari Shield Bear, but to, to me that's a, a bit of a dangerous angle to try and count on that. There's just a, a very good chance that she gets popped here, and so I feel a little bit better not trying to make the full investment in her, and then still just getting to boost up our Sun Guardian a little bit. Alright, dude Heim's out of mana. Let's bring in the attacks. I'm curious if he wants to make the, the, the Hextech Handler in front of anyone, since we do have the Blade's Edge in hand. Tries to take down the Sun Guardian. Okay. Manageable. So that'll take him to 10. Blade's Edge will take him to 9. And we just got to get in for 3 damage, and we can we can finish things off. Let's let's be real. Let's Blade's Edge this Jace. We got Shunpo in hand, right? <laughs> we, we should be able to Shunpo him down. And, uh come in for an attack after. Let's be real. <laughs> oh no. Oh, that's just on to decimate. Okay. 
doesn't doesn't hit our big uh, our big game plan at the end of the day. All right, all right, not a bad spot. Losing out on the decimate kind of sucks, but we're certainly about to boom in combat here, and he's below six mana, and that really uh, cuts down on the number of things you have to worry about. You don't have to have vengeances or anything like that coming through. Aftershock onto Ravoon. Interesting. Not sure what that's supposed to achieve. Never blocking. I guess we, we could have shunpoed Jace beforehand so we didn't take the damage here, but I have a I have a sneaking suspicion that this game's just done anyways. That's not <laughs> that's not the, the the best mindset to have. Let's make some mediocre plays and be okay with it. That's not really the the professional way, but it was enough at the end of the day. Right, GG. On to the next one. See what old brown elites are able to do here. See if we can't get a big, a big surprise uh, right of negation coming in, shutting down a big spell, making him say, "Oh no, the brown elites got me." <laughs> Boop joke. It's probably what opponents saying, you know. <laughs> Just saying, poop joke. Interesting start. Interesting start. And so what I was going to say is, I'm number one, curious if he spends any mana on the first turn. If he spends mana on the first turn, we can play the Ram Hound and then open with an Elite, and he can't hit it with the Thermogenic Beam. And so that's uh, kind of interesting and strong. Then you have to think about the next turn in terms of, oh boy, well, we did just draw Battlesmith. And I, I think I'm okay with doing this, where we're going to activate the Ram Hound with Scythria. We'll get her on board, and then... Uh, next turn, we can start to to pump through some of this with the Battlesmith. We don't completely lose out on the mana here since we did uh, pick up a succession. And so I, I, I think that that's going to kind of tie in nicely with everything we're trying to pull off. Definitely hold on to Scythria, though. Try and get some Battlesmith action happening. And then it gets, like, more and more tempting. If you say, like, opponent just spends, uh, like, one mana this turn and goes into next turn with six to try and play a six-mana play, if we then get the opportunity to, like, right of negation something away, that's, uh, that's nothing to complain about. That's a lot of raw power coming at him. Just such a huge tempo play if that comes through. Okay. Doesn't look like we'll be bringing it, but... Something to think about. He's he's spent all his mana, so we don't have to worry about it this turn, anyways. Ooh, our big boy's turning up. Both we got we got gamer Garen, whatever this one's called, on the gamer board. He's ready to battle. Oh, Daddy Jarvin coming through to. <laughs> he says, "Don't be don't be taking down my son." Uh, here I'm in, I'm here to jump in front of the bullet. Not exactly what we wanted, but he's here. He's here to he's here to protect, you know, protect and serve. That's what Jarvan does. Nothing beats field testing. We fight for those who cannot. Alright, so our dudes are gonna be a little weaker on this upcoming turn, but now opponents in this kinda Ooh. Ooh, never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Not if we're going to pick up Bannerman. Uh, but I was going to say, now opponent's in this kind of crappy spot to where we attack with everybody. He, The Jarvan would come in and hook the Jace. And then it's like, well, is that enough? Are we, like, okay uh, for things to end at that point? And uh, it, it didn't come down to matter, but I... <laughs> Look at you there. Look at you there. Brown elites coming through, right in negation, doing its thing. Mm. Mm, feels good. Feels good. Mark it a W. On to the next one. <laughs> Brown elites. All right, so what are we up against next? We got Jace Lux, which I'm not super worried about. I think all of our matchups there are fairly reasonable. Uh, again, as we have things like Brown Elites able to Rite of Negation away a big expensive spell on a critical turn, pretty strong. Uh, I, I don't worry about Talia Lissandra with either um, 
Sunburn or with the, the Nocturne deck, both of those should annihilate Talia Lissandra. And that leaves us with the last deck up here with, uh, uh, with Trundlemere, which is on our don't need to ban list, but it's the one I would prefer to ban out of all of these. I think it has the, the, the best matchups against everything that we're bringing. All right, I'm going to start things off here with Callista Nocturne. And the, the thing I'm kind of doing this for is I suspect it, it should be pretty obvious what the the, the right of negations are doing, right? I, I think when you see Sharima Elites, you say, ah, that's probably right of negation in there, right? I mean, maybe it's not necessarily. Like, you, you have to get to the point to where you've seen a... Um, uh, where, where you've seen like no Vanguard Bannermans and the like, but where I'm kind of getting at is being in a closed deck list event. Uh, as we get to that, uh, the the matchups, like I, I want him to have less knowledge of my elite deck than he does of this. You know, like the, the Nocturne deck should be pretty straightforward in what's about to come at you. Uh, there's not a lot of variability there, but when we have that kind of surprise uh, Sharima coming out of the elites. I, I think it's kind of nice to keep that a little bit hidden and try to only play it uh, in one game or, or save it for the backup games. Alright, so with this I kept a one drop. I mulliganed everything else away. I was looking for a two. Uh, we would really like to curve out uh, as hard as we can here. And uh, we didn't find anything. We found Callista, which is okay, but we would definitely prefer to have a a two drop on this upcoming turn if we can. Did not find it. Not the end of the world, just not super awesome. Now, I, I did play a little bit of Talia Lissandra as the 4 1 patch came out. Uh, it, I, I don't remember the removal suite I played, though. I, I think we did play. Um, Blighted Ravine, but did not play Avalanche. I, I can't entirely remember uh, how we went about it. But I know what's about to happen here. We're just going to attack with everybody. <laughs> here they come. Interesting. So he pushes down the, the six Frozen Thrall. I would suspect... This upcoming turn is going to be pretty bad for us. He's probably going to take the blocks here wherever he can. I figured he would put Lissandra in front of our 2-1, the 2-2 in front of our 4-3, uh, take the 5 damage, and then next turn he's going to play a Drakmore Thrall, whatever that guy's called, uh, and he's going to have the two 8-8s on the board. He's not going to be able to attack with them, but he's going to have them uh, at the end of the turn. So we'll have to kind of decide if we want to go for a soul cleave or not. We have a, you know, reasonable option with it. Um, it feels like it might be a little slow. We'll, we'll just have to see how this breaks down. Like he's, I, I would suspect next turn he's just going to play the Drakmore Thrall and then pass, right? It's going to cost five mana. He doesn't have a, a, a real good reason to attack here. Mm-hmm. And so would we want to Soul Cleave? Like, we're, we're really looking to just get uh, the, the big Mist Wraiths on board, but the, the downside here is that uh, we don't have that much space on our board. So he's definitely going to have four blockers next turn. There's nothing we can do to stop that. Uh, but do we want to get these big things going? That's tough. I think we're good to just Wraith Caller. He's going to get the good blocks, and then on the follow-up turn, we can look to do some surprise Risen Misting and uh, take down the blockers and then hopefully win with the Harrowing on the following turn. But yeah, this is pretty bad. That was a, a powerful draw. Just not having a two-drop was a, a pretty big disaster here. All right, we're going to want Callista down at the end. I suspect he's going to uh, Ice Shard in the middle of this combat, which is also going to kill off two of our units. We're just doing zero damage on this attack. This is this is about as bad as it gets. But again, if we can take down 
some of these uh, these big boys next turn. They're going to have damage on him if he's a little bit short of lethal. And then we can Harrowing on the following turn. We definitely still have a shot in this one. It's just a matter of, is the 8 mana too much next turn? Uh, and will we still have enough mana to Harrowing as it rolls back uh, on turn 8? All right, so Callista gets the flip. We have a future Callista that could be relevant. I don't think it's going to be the case, but, you know, there's some potential there. And let's just make sure we have a couple of more blockers on this board. Do you really have a play here? I guess he could have a right of negation for the soul cleave. That would make sense as to why we're why we're stopping and thinking about this. That would actually be pretty positive for us if he if he right of negations the soul cleave and then we just get to play the second one. It's still good to do the three bank on mana, and then have our our harrowing a, a little bit protected here. I guess, you know, I guess, I guess that's a, uh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? <sighs> All right, well, here comes a precious pet, or here comes a, <laughs> here comes one of those, uh, those nocturne card draw things. Oh, what a disaster. What do we have, four and 30? <sighs> All right, Legionary Charge, I appreciate you turning up. So let's see. Again, we do still have some blockers here. We don't have to don't have to be getting lethal on this. So let's see. We'll drop in a risen mist. Definitely blocking her. Now we have a chance to take down a frost guard thrall. The the thing now is like what about like three sisters and what about um ice shards and so i think we want to do this i think if we put the dum dum over here in front of lissandra uh, ooh, don't draw a card grow him to five power so we can try and take her down now we do still die to three sisters like that's certainly a thing but i think this is what gives us the biggest chance here to not be dying to his ice shard kind of plays All right, so now we're at two. We don't have to worry about him rolling into the next turn and just, like, playing a Lissandra and ice sharding us out of the game. So that's pretty cool. Ooh. Ooh, Fam Jam, how you feeling about this? How you feeling about this? All right, well, we set it up. We we had, had things go the way they needed to go for this to be a thing. You just got to squeeze them cheeks and hope. You squeezing? Squeezing good? <laughs> I, I I ultimately worry that we're going to run into like a harsh winds or something here, but who knows? Who knows what he's got in hand? He... Alright, what all you got for us here? Okay. Buried in ice. All right. Well, I'm, I'm still happy with how that went. Uh, that was a, a pretty big disaster in terms of not having anything on turn two and then running into the big, uh, the 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 big frozen thrall setup. I, I feel like that's something that uh, doesn't happen too frequently, and to, to still be in that space to where we we, we ran pretty good. I, I like how that went. All right. Up against the Jace Lux now. So what do we got? Let's hang on to this Arachnoid Horror. I think I want to hang on to Callista here. Like, I don't want to just hard mulligan for one drop, so that's a, a little bit more of an ask because we're only playing five that we really want to play on the first turn. But finding some other cheaper plays would be okay. I think what it comes down to, what I'm curious with, is if he plays like a Forge Chief on the first turn, 
uh, if we want to trade the onlooker for it. I think we probably do. Remember, we're the ones who make progress happen. I don't want him just sitting around generating value out of this thing. All right, the spider game, the spider draws coming through. Do we want to take the trade? I think we can wait on this for a moment. If we're going to just play Callista next turn. We might as well uh, try and level her up a little bit. No reason to just trade right from the get-go. Now, do we ever want to just soul cleave an arachnoid horror? I, I don't think so. That that strikes me as being a, a little bit greedy. I think I'm okay with the skitterer, though. If he's not able to block this turn, then we can look to cycle back two turns from now. Uh, soul cleave the skitterer, maybe, uh, and get a second big attack in. Or, if the skitterer is just the biggest, uh, the biggest fearsome we have, you have the opportunities to bring it back with Callista. So this could be positive for him. Like if he gets to block the Callista with the Mage Seeker and then put a removal spell onto her. Kind of sucks, but I think this is fine. Interesting. He left her up. I wonder if he's just got a, a Thermogenic Beam. But now we are in this spot to where one kill will level up the Callista. So the Soul Cleave has a bit of... Uh, a bit of potential. Yeah, it's a thermogenic beam. I don't feel terrible about that, I don't think. If, he, if he's spending his full six mana to take down Callista for the turn, it does activate both of his units, but it's not terrible at the end of the day. Remembrance. All right. Well, he's gonna he's gonna get the hook. It's not that bad. We're just gonna be in the space to where we're gonna have to win with the harrowing. So, really, you really gonna give us the chance for the flip? Like it? I assume that he has another removal spell for Callista at this point, right? He's like, okay, well you can flip, but I'm still just gonna hook with the Persuader and play a removal spell after the fact. What? All of our future Callistas are still flipped after that, so it's kind of kind of dangerous to, to take it that way. You can't outrun justice. Yeah, yeah. All right, he rethinks it. He says, "Not yet." Not today. How big are our mist wraiths? We, we, we haven't leveled any of them up. It's not super appealing. I, I think, again, we're still just building up to this harrowing. Let's just make sure we don't die here. We're not going to get a, a, a particularly juicy attack on this next turn. And so let's just prevent this damage while we can, and then we'll try to harrow him out. That's bold. Interesting. Okay. Well, I'll take it. So who's Callista bringing back? Like this, it's the spider, right? That's who we want. Does this get messed up if we drop a Risen Mists? I don't think it does. All right, still the spider. So weird. I, I, I still don't understand the angles why Callista got to stay up. Interesting. Interesting.
Maybe he'll just play Progress Day, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's what you would that's what you would expect to see at this point with progress day. So weird. Let's get to work. We can do this. Now Lux. Alright. Well he shouldn't be lethaling us next turn. That's the big thing. My 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 fear now though is that we're not gonna have enough to, to kill him on the way back, right? Kind of regretting not playing this dog now as well. Oh, he does progress too. Interesting. Well, uh, I'm going to want to start soul cleaving here, right? We want to uh, have as big of mist rates as we can get on this upcoming turn. Damn. Damn, damn. Ugh, that's gross. All right, Callista, get out here and do some blocking. <laughs> we'll get some fresh copies of you next turn. We haven't hit any Wraith Callers, which is uh, a, a bit on the annoying side of things. And so I was kind of hoping as we Harrow next turn, we can Callista back some units, but it's not going to be the case. We're not going to have the, the opportunity for that. All right. Ugh, this game is it's not not good, not going well. I guess do we have the the spider though? The spider does take away a block from him. So I mean, we we should at least hopefully be in a space to where he can't kill us next turn. We're going to kill off like four dudes. But we need another like harrowing or something. Picking up the Callista is kind of nice. We can maybe go for round 2 with her, but we're definitely not getting a lethal from 14 with this much board down. Well, I guess... Hmm. It should be three Callistas, but then do we get we get to bring two spiders back, right? The, I, I think our mist wraiths are three attackers. And so it should be three Callistas, two spiders, and then one mist wraith. And then the two spiders will uh, only let him have one blocker. Yeah. And then now... If we attack with Callista, is she just bringing more Callistas back? Like, can we attack with Callista and then just get more spiders? Nothing. Right? <laughs> that would be that would be the sickness, right? If we're attacking with Callista and then she's bringing spiders back. So we're attacking with Callista. That looks like a five attack unit. So she's bringing back more mist wraiths at this point. We gotta do something like this. Those look like seven attack mist wraiths now. Maybe that was enough. I mean, hashtag planned it that way. <laughs> so he's got two blockers onto sevens, only has three mana left. If he has a mystic shot for a mist wraith, that's going to be enough to protect him, at least for this moment. Uh, is that really? How's that only 11 damage? Oh, because he's blocking the Callistas. Okay. I I forgot about that aspect. The, the Callistas... Uh, Shutting down the other units. Or the the Callista blocks getting getting shut down here. Oh, that's this is brutal. I mean attacking with the other units How close would that have gotten us? If we hit with I think we're just dead here with an open. But if we hit with uh, just like one Callista, maybe that wouldn't have been as bad. Yeah. Whew, tough stuff. It was that Mist Wraith coming back that was actually the end of our day. If we were <laughs> if we were resummoning the spiders, then we would have been able to to neg out his whole team and been okay. GG. Oof, that's tough. Rough day for the Mist Wraiths. 
but when you uh <laughs> when you when you go to make a soul cleave play on your mistrates then you miss the allegiance that is a a bit of a bummer whenever it comes about so much Heimerdinger Jace today. That's wild. This is three matches, three sets of Jace. That's crazy. Uh, but I, I think it's okay to take down. If you remember from the beginning, we're never going to ban Rise. I think that's okay. The uh, the, the Zillion deck, it, it has like some angles of worry. It's got like quicksand in it. And then it's also got um, like the bombs can pressure off the the Callista deck, but I, I kind of feel like if we come into this match, he's probably just going to ban Callista. I think that's going to be our common ban for the day. And then I think Elites is fairly okay into it. So let's do this. Let's ban out Heimerdinger Jace, as expected. And then we'll start off with Sunburn. Oof. Okay. A little bit of Echo... No jinx. No dice with that hand. That was brutal. That hand sucked. Ooh, into double decimate. Well, this is how you lose, friends. <laughs> let's see. Let's see what we can do. This is not a good start. Like, uh, the, the a million decimate starts what we ended up having there. Like there was, like, one in the opener and then two into the follow-up. But I think this is okay. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I'm not amped about like rushing out these super early Katarinas. So we might need to just hold her back a little bit. I'm gonna say you can't think about just like not playing anything this turn so you get that little bit of a bank. Uh, just playing the shield bear next turn and then trying to push in through there because our attacks next turn aren't going to be that great, right? Uh, he's gonna have the the two health unit or the two two on the board and just block the, the shield bear. So if our plan is just to play the priestess next turn, the shield bear is not super strong. Probably just got to start blasting, though. Clad in shining sunlight. Like, how okay with it are we if we just, like, hit with Katarina and then he plays a uh, quicksand? It doesn't feel great. This was a pretty good draw on the Sunhawk, shutting down his 2-2. There's not a lot of big units he can still play at this point. He can play a 2-3, uh, or he can play a... a, a yeah, Chronomancer, but that's okay. It's not as bad. I've been practicing, and it's not perfect. But look. If your prediction is correct, we have much to look forward to. Goes for the trade, doesn't doesn't take that freebie onto the Solari soldier. Alright. Yeah, we got our boy rear guard now. Now this is the kind of space to where I feel like a little bit better about dropping Katarina. See how much mana he he spends on this turn. I don't think this is a priestess turn. It's like I don't really want to play any cards off of the priestess next turn, and so I think we're gonna be booming with Katarina. It seems like he's he's probably got a scrying sands here, so I don't uh, anticipate this to be spectacular. But mystic shot, okay. I think this is how we want to be going about it. I will play the Blade's Edge. I, was, I think we're going to just need every point of damage we can get with these double decimates. We're going to we're gonna start running out of stuff to do. Uh, so. Let's, let's get to blasting. Katarina turns up. Uh, I, I think we have to be prepared for Echo next turn. So I don't want to mess around with Katarina. I want to play the Priestess. I want to be able to Meteor Shower or Obliterate, whatever, uh, if we get a chance. Got yeah, either one. Let's go with the Meteor Shower. It's just a, a little bit cheaper. The, the opposing deck doesn't play, like, health-gaining combat tricks. We shouldn't have to worry about... Uh, Echo going up to five health in some way. Ooh, Nox and Fervor is interesting though. Let's us lets us block Echo and then just Nox and Fervor our unit away so he doesn't get the uh, doesn't get the strike. And we're pretty close to lethal. I mean, we have eight in hand, uh, nine 
or uh, 11 from the Nox and Fervor, and then 12 from a Katarina Blade's Edge. So we can just outright win this game without getting into combat. It's not not something I feel you know excited about. Um, uh, because it is a deck that plays Rite of Negations, but you know we'll take what we can where we can. Now, if he wants to counterspell the Nox and Fervor with a Mystic Shot, then he uh, at least still doesn't get the strike. Let the bloodshed begin. Well, I guess somebody's ready to block next turn. <laughs> ready to block, huh? All right, let's send that blade's edge to face. We, we're 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 purely on the decimate plan now. Do Leo, want to change anything? Like, I I think we can get through the next turn without dying to an attack, but. If we get to save Leona for next turn, like a, uh, I, I like just being a little bit slower with these decimates. Okay. This is one of those things if we if we show our hand a little bit too early against the deck with a million predicts in it, then we we ultimately have to worry uh, worry about what happens uh, in terms of him playing a right of negation. <sighs> but let's see. I, I don't like killing this Echo right now. If we come in and kill the Echo and then he has like the revive your units rally kind of thing, that's all a little bit too scary for me. But now it's like if he fucks around a little bit, we do still have the chance to, uh, to, to Leona in front of this Echo. We just dead here? No way we're just dead here. We can at least play Leona first, right? Does this what does this revive allies that died this round and rally? Okay. This is the parallel convergence is the one to worry about, but he hasn't played called shots yet, right? So we don't have to worry about uh Oh shit, we don't have six mana now. But we don't have to worry about uh, the rally cards coming through. Shit, shit, shit. I thought we had the mana to both Leona and Decimate. That's not ideal. So we can't be killing Echo on this round. That's, that's too much, right? If he's got his... Uh, revive your units rally thing. He's just, he's just going to kill us. Alright. What do we got? A Solari soldier? Let's see where this gets us. <laughs> let's, let's, let's start doing a little bit of stuff here. You gotta see if you can't get him to tap down a little bit of mana. We don't die to the free attack card at this point. I guess he can't really have it, but... Where does that leave us? Okay. Uh, check the Oracle's Eye. We got six mana after we do this. <laughs> you gotta, gotta make sure you can do those mathematics. Alright, let's see where that gets us. Spend some mana, bro. Just spend it all. Play what what eight mana Sharima spell is there? <laughs> Play uh Alright, well there's the chrono break. That was the one that we were initially worried about. We do still have the blocker for Echo though, so it's not uh not the end of the world. Oh maybe it is. The the voice of the risen coming back. Alright, squeeze him. Squeeze him, tease him. 
Is he just upset, or is he just deciding which unit to sacrifice? That's what I expected was going to happen. All right, GG. I, I don't feel like we would have gotten that on the previous turn. I, I think that that was going to be a bit of an ask to... Um, but that was still... I, I think we were kind of approaching that the right way. It's just you, it's so tough if you're ever wanting to come in and take down that Echo or not. Um, hmm. It's like you, you almost just need to be like really going for it in the sense of uh, not giving them as many predicts. But it's tough. It's tough when you start with the, 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 two, uh, the two decimates in your opening hand. Just... No, uh, you, you you just know that it's gonna go poorly, <laughs> right? You're you're essentially on like a mulligan to four or mulligan to a five uh, when you have that two card hand start. Still went okay though. Like I, I can't complain about how that game went, and we don't know we didn't get the win. But starting with double decimates and having them at four with the decimate on the stack, that's it's not a terrible place to be. So with this, we'll start off with the rear guard. Then next turn, we'll play Soldier Pigeon. Uh, get that. Getting getting the three one drops on board on the second turn is pretty big deal. Not something that that Rise is uh, too excited to go up against. Raise your weapon, Sunward. Raise your weapon, Sunward, bro. What you got for us? Are you going to deploy a 1-3? Are you going to say, here's my attuning friend? He is. Alright, well I'm ready to enter the battle step. Send my units into the red zone. Big old chunk of damage. Hardy chunk of damage, if you will. Alright, aggro friends, let's continue to aggro. <laughs> it's a it's a reasonable addition with the Nox and Fervor as well. Like if he wants to uh, play two spells this turn to get the flow to get the uh, the Dragonling for next turn, you know, pretty pretty good chance to uh, just knocks and fervor that unit away and come in for the lethal. I, I think that's probably the way we would want to go about it as opposed to um, as opposed to dropping the shield bearer. Let's see what we draw though. Sunhawk. Okay. She's just gonna stun the uh, stun the dragonling. That's pretty good. There's not too many slow spells we worry about here. Like, Concussive Palm is annoying since he gets a stun and he gets a unit out of it. Uh, but it, it, it's pretty tough for him to start recovering out of this. Right? Is he going to play a recall? Like, none of that's particularly strong. Probably want to just go ahead and drop the Shield Bear here as well. Just send it all in. All right, we lost a dude, but the next rune won't kill the Sunhawk. So, got a got a little bit of protection there. All right, here comes the squad. Taking him to three. That's not a bad place to be when you got a Nox and Fervor in hand. Not a bad place. Let's see if he pranks us. I'm gonna prank it up to cost him five. <laughs> make us make us pay the full price for the Nox and Fervor. Right.
I don't know, fam. Seems pretty good, right? Seems pretty good. No more dragonlings coming through. Big Daddy Rise. What's the chance he ever pranks us? Eh, I don't think it matters. <laughs> I don't think it matters. Let's just go ahead and send it. Off to the face place. Alright. Victory. Next battle. The Brown Elites coming up against Rise. Let's see what y'all can do. So we're going to be looking for early game stuff here. You know, we're not not trying to do one of those mid game curves where we're like a three into a four into a five. You know, that's all great if it comes together. But everything about this opening hand is terrible, right? <laughs> we need we, we need our ones and twos. We really want to be starting off as quickly as we can. And not bad. That that really pops off for turn three. Ooh, and a ram hound. OK, OK. Pop it, lock it, drop it. Stop, drop, open up shop. <laughs> oh, no. That's how Rough Riders roll. Y'all know that one? Are you, uh... Are, are, you, are you old enough for X gonna give it to you? <laughs> I'm gonna start barking. That's, a, that's when you know it's about to get real. You're just gonna start barking at you. <laughs> Interesting addition with the single combat. Uh, like if we leave the Vanguard Defender behind, we can play double Vanguard Squire and then try and single combat the Eye of the Dragon. Uh, I think I'm pretty on board with this. We, we miss out on having that two power, but he shouldn't have any real way to be stopping this single combat. And getting this unit out of the way and removing the potential for the Dragonlings and everything, it just strikes me as being really awesome. Bring in some runes. Turns out none of the uh, none of the world runes are capable of killing our units. Vanguard Defender down here hanging out with Tough he says, "I'm ready. I'm ready to soak up the runes." Ready to do my part. All right, dude goes spell mana. And I think we want a single combat off of the Ram Hound. So if it gets recalled or something for him to protect the eye of the dragon and it only costs one mana to replay and it's very easy to get him back to three three what was that an otter puss all right let the combat begin You go watch out for that prank, though. Uh, it feels like there's a, a a very real chance that we're never casting this champion strength. We wouldn't be able to cast it until turn seven, or well, I guess you can't play it on turn six. Give your take the rally and then just boom at your opponent. That might be a space we're actually looking at here. You don't have any uh, too many other cards in hand. Ooh, Bannerman, what's up? I think we want to go for that. And so like, the, the, you have the option here, right, to either play the um, play the Vanguard Defender and then next turn maybe we pick up a spell and get to do two cards in the same turn. I don't think that's where we wanna, we're want we going to be, though. I, I think we want to uh, bank three mana and then turn six, play the, the champion strength and then just try and win off the expensive rally. Uh, at uh, worst... He has a deny for it, and he just can't really play any other cards for the turn. So I think that's going to be fine. I think I'm okay with this. One banner, one destiny. Might just lethal him, right? Be one short of the lethal here, but 
I think it's uh, it's still pretty good. I fight with my spirit, not my fist. All right, Vanguard Defender on the board. The opposing turn champion strength ready to come through. Let's see if we get pranked or not, right? We can still get pranked. He can stop us from doing this. I I I don't know. I mean it doesn't doesn't strike me as something uh the kids are doing these days. <laughs> dropping dropping the pranks in this space. So maybe we'll get away with it. Nope. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe he won't realize we can cast it on the opponent's turn. Maybe not. Worth a shot, you know. Looks like I'm ready. Bye bye. All right, so we're gonna want to tough block these units. Uh, we unfortunately won't survive against the tasty Fey folk. Still, just have to block it. Uh, but if we put the tough units in front, that does take away from the amount of heal that they get for the turn. So I would suspect, I mean, the Dragonling's gonna come in. The Tasty Faithful probably isn't. And then next turn, we'll just have to see where we're at. So are we going to want to cast this for Demacia next turn? It's, um, so let's see. Before we before we get there, we attack with everybody. We'll do a little to big. He puts the the eye of the dragon in front of the defender. He puts his four two in front of the vanguard sergeant. He puts his other two attacker in front of the vanguard bannerman. He goes up six health to eight. We hit for eight, but he's got a rune prison in hand. And so we're, we're going to have to at least four Demacia or add another unit to the board. How does Concerted Strike fit in? If we then say Concerted Strike, the Tasty Fae Folk, where are we at? So the same blocks, right? He puts the eye in front of the defender, puts the Dragonling in front of a three. He's looking to take eight. That's the lethal. Okay. Right, so he's going to have the Eye of the Dragon in front of our Tough, so he gets the maximum health gain. Four in front of the 3-3, three, three, the 2-1 in front of the 3-3 three, three here. Uh, we are going to shoot down the Tasty Fey Folk, so he's going to gain two, go up to four. He's going to Rune Prison off the Vanguard Squire, and then we'll still have that four damage remaining. A little bit different way here, but we can still concerted strike this dragonling and find ourselves in the same spot. Neg three into two. Got a deny. Watch this one though. This is the one he's not gonna see coming. <laughs> he only he only gets to gain one off the Dragonling, and we have the two damage coming in with the Bannerman. Oh, he's got more cards? And Treat only draws Rise. That doesn't do anything. Ooh, 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 ooh. GG. Squeezing them cheeks, I hope. Taking down Rise. That's what we were hoping to be able to do with this deck list. If we ran into a triple control lineup like this, uh, if the triple control lineup has Rise in it, I don't feel completely terrible about it. All of our decks have good matchups up against Rise, and so uh, we we're able to take him down. Feels good. Feels good. So what do we got here? It looks like he's got a Nora deck. I was curious how the Nora decks were going to, to come about in terms of, do you want to play Nora uh, Bandle City, right? Do you want to play Nora Vague? I'm sorry, Nora Shadow Isles, and then... Potentially bring Tristana. I, I didn't suspect we were going to see too much Tristana today, but uh, really not surprised to see the Nora turn up. It's just the the deck here that gives our lineup the most problems. It's the one we're going to take out. Uh, I'm not excited 
uh, about playing against Annie Ezreal. This isn't going to be a particularly strong matchup for anything that we're doing. Uh, we're going to have to hope that we're strong against Heimerdinger Jace, which is odd. I've, I've, I've not... I, I did a bit of like searching around articles and for what people were recommending for best of three today. I, I didn't really see too much in terms of Heimerdinger Jace. There wasn't too much out there, but it's been kind of surprising seeing so much of him turn up. All right. Nocturne taken away again. Sending in the sunburn. Again, same kind of deal. Uh, I, uh, if we have to play two games with the elites, I I don't really want him playing, knowing that we're playing right of negation. Now, I suspect that that, that never punished, never punished is a, a a fantastic player. I feel like he's probably able to deduce that we're probably playing right of negation, but I, I don't want to you know advertise that that's what's about to come at you. So if we play. Uh, if we queue up the elites and they run into Annie Ezreal, just get completely smoked. Uh, but we played the Rite of Negation at some point. Have to play it again. Don't really want them to know. And so, if it's if it's because we've won with Sunburn and now we're on the replay matches, I don't I don't feel like that's nearly as uh, nearly as detrimental. All right, so let's punish those transgressions. Now Decimate turning up. Kind of interesting for next turn if we want to play towards a Pale Cascade. So say if we play Solari Soldier here, uh, the next turn only play Crimson Pigeon. Well, let's see how the board looks. I'm sorry, only play the, the Shield Bear. Like, just trading with Reggie kind of sucks. I don't think we're going to be in a space where we're just not, not sending in the squad, though. Mystic Shot. I was, uh, I was curious if we were going to, to run into the likes of Quietus. Did not. Alright, well we're gonna we're gonna have to turn this one around quick. Uh, the, the the big burn hand turned up again. Definitely got the, the definitely got the big burn turning up now. So let's see. Let's see what we can do. Alright, we got a bird. What more can you ask for? <laughs> what more? Now the, the question will be, do we like preemptively pale cascade here? I mean we've got ten damage in hand. Uh, assuming he blocks our two big units, we can get to being like two damage short. I'm not particularly excited about that and so the new question is do we want to uh, just go ahead and pale cascade see if we can't pick up another unit and i think i'm okay with this another bird it's like if we don't start spending all of this mana and we keep over banking we're, we're not going to be in a particularly strong spot so now if he has to like play jace that sucks if he has a burn spell uh, that's that's more in the lines of being okay. Like he doesn't want to vengeance any of this stuff. Oh boy, the feasts are vile today. The feasts are vile. Well, let's try and counter one. Got to gotta get that burn doing something. Down, down to 13. Sweet 7 damage in hand. Whew, feels, feels a little short. Feels a little short, fam. Alright. That, that was appealing. <laughs> it definitely, definitely could have been worse. I, I'd much prefer to have Ravoon as opposed to that... Uh, 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 opposed to that decimate. Gotta get something punching in. 
Priestess, what do you got for us? We got the five mana. We can Meteor Shower here. I think that's okay. If it's the only one we can play out of these, then the, the Meteor Shower does kill all of his champions. And so we have a, a little bit of a bonus there. So, I mean, he can block the rear guard and take it down. I think this is fine. We gotta, <laughs> we gotta get something. Let's get these shitty attacks in here. <laughs> Hope that that's something starting to roll through. Get him to nine, but we have the Eye of Rahorok to shut down two units on the next one. Maybe, maybe, you know. Ooh, Katarina. Ooh, fam. That's exciting. I don't know how you feel about that, but I'm pretty excited about Katarina turning up. <laughs> that's the that's 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 the way. That's the 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 never-ending solution. All right, we maybe should have Nox and Fervor there, but how much, how much removal can you even still have at this point? How much can you still even have? I get in there, Big Daddy. Bird, bird's ready for battle. All right, three damage coming in. <laughs> We're getting there. We're doing it. Alright, got a stun bird. We got the Katarina to shoot down the Spiderling. Oof. Oof, fam. Here comes a progress day, right? I mean, we can get wider than this stuff. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Two threes. We got two threes in here. Fuck. He's not going to see this coming, though. This is, this is going to be the big one. This is going to be the big boom of the day. Boom. Give me that. Give me that Trefarian. Give me that Weapons of the Lost, bro. <laughs> what a stunner. What a stunner. Can we drop the Sunhawk? I don't, I don't think I like the Sunhawk. Whew. All right, here they come. <laughs> That's it. That's it, Weapons of the Lost bringing the thunder. Oh, that feels good. That feels good. Check that off your fucking bingo board. Win a game with Reckless Trefarian. That's not the Reckless Trefarian, my bad. I forget which one he is. Forget which one he is. He was the, uh, the one titled Never Good Enough for Expedition, and so... <laughs> Hurts to say mean things about him like that, but... That was, that was the way his life went. Oh, shit. Saying it's not good. We gotta, we gotta draw good fast. These mulligans today have been pretty painful. I, I think that that's a, a safe and objective statement in that we have not mulliganed well whatsoever today. All right, well, here's the succession. Let, let us do something. Jeez. Now, do we want to start chaining off these Vanguard Squires? Like, I'm not particularly excited about it. Like, if we draw one, one elite we can play next turn, it's okay. And then we can just chain all of them onto the board. Well, it's an <laughs> the the ultimate punish rolling through. The ultimate punish. Oh man, he says I'll show you I'll show you what you get for being a little greedy with the with the dudes bannerman.
Interesting. I'm curious if we get a, a, a nice play in some way with this Bannerman next turn. He's just trying to damage down our units. Like, we, we, if he had a Vile Feast, he would have just played it, right? But he's getting to the space to where it's like, when, when we start to play units like Garon and he gets to Vengeance, we're, we're really hoping to be wider on board so we can get ahead of that faster. But, like, we do have this decent set here to where uh, we can drop in Garen. Now we get to just open with Jarvan next turn, Jarvan hooking in the Donger. Um, I suspect that's what's going to eat a Vengeance out of the opponent, but we still get to, to churn in for uh, a, a fair amount of damage. The other thing to note there would be is if our Jarvan survives this somehow. So if like we attack and he doesn't have Vengeance, he only has shit like Shock, shock Blast, then we do have the mana to start Cataclysming here. And so uh, if we Cataclysm off a Garen, then he'll be flipped and we'll start getting the Rally next turn. So we have uh, so, some high-valued plays if he doesn't have a Vengeance. Sometimes you just gotta chalk it up and you say, <laughs> "No, with how this game is gone, I'm not. I'm not surprised." Give it another go, though. We'll give it another shot. So we we have like two options, right? We can go for the big Jarvan play next turn. I think that that's a little bit too greedy. Uh, I think we want to do the Defender, we'll do the Vanguard Squire for one mana, we'll follow up with the Bannerman, and then we'll open with another Jarvan next turn that should be striking down the, the Floor Be Gone. My journey continues. It just feels way too greedy. It would be really sweet to get this, uh, get the, the Challenger Scout thing going with Jarvan on the board, but that's a, that's a pretty greedy ask. I wonder if he's playing uh, Ruination. That would be another another frightening one to have come about. Okay, did have the second Vengeance. Glad we didn't Jarvan. Hopefully that gives us a little bit of protection, you know, now that he's got a, uh, <laughs> he's got the lethal on board with the double floor be gone, taking away one, at least says that he doesn't have the, the elusive lethal right out the gates. I'll feast on to Jarvan. So it's going to pop the shield. Ranger's Resolve isn't enough to stop it. But we are killing both of the elusives here. Seems like he's got another another sixth cost spell primed and ready to go. But you know, one, one step at a time for a hand this shitty. <laughs> so if we can get a little bit more going. You can see how how this could have gone nicely though if we if we didn't have an opening hand that that was all five drops <laughs> if we're if we're able to start off pretty reasonably early and then we don't then we get that bannerman down on a, a reasonable time like there's a a lot of decent stuff that could have been happening there this was uh just a just one of those games that you're it's never winning. All right, so if we drop the bird, who do we want to follow up with? Probably just a second double bird. Like, I guess the question is going to be, is, are we going to have to, like, four Demacia next turn? Which we probably do. So I don't think we want a swift wing flight. We'll see if, like, everything we have survives combat here. If something dies, we might pivot, but I, I think we're going to look to double bird and then four Demacia. Maybe even follow up with the Swiftwing Flight at that point. Alright, we're dead. 
Oh, that's tough though. That's tough. It's uh, like these these mulligans today. Like I'm I'm really surprised and really happy that we've managed to be two and one, and a lot of those losses have been extremely competitive. <laughs> I mean, uh, we we just. I, I don't really want it to, to sound like I'm complaining about luck, but again, I think these are pretty objectively terrible hands that we've been mulliganing into. All right, though. Interesting. I, I don't think we need to keep single combats here. It's like I, I run up against Annie decks, and it's like, ooh, a zero attack unit. Let's hang on to the single combat, but I, <clears throat> I don't think that's going to be necessary here. All right. Well, welcome to today. <laughs> name name a more iconic duo of uh, of two drops or of cards you don't want in your hand in the opener right of negation or decimate you tell me you tell me insane all right well i must say I'm, I'm not surprised with any of this. Absolutely none of this has surprised me in this set of matches. This is just insane. Like this, this is going back to that that idea when you're when you're building a deck. If you're just going to say, okay, well, how about this? I'm just going to make my magic deck here, and I'm only going to play 15 land <laughs> because if you if you just draw perfect every time, then it doesn't matter that you're playing a, a very suboptimal land count. You can just get away with it because you're going to draw perfect. This is just the exact opposite. It's like, why not just play one right of negation and one champion strength? Because we know we're just going to draw them all way super early every single time. <laughs> it's just not, just not going to matter. Oh, it's insane. Get you that file. All right, though. Let's keep at it. I suspect at the end of the day here, we're going to have a completely empty board. He picked up one spell off of the Archivist. It's too easy to find a, a Mystic Shot or anything to take down a unit. She only found Blade's Edge. Interesting. I wonder if opponents over there complain about their, uh, about their draws and their luck. <laughs> oh, my Station Archivist. All right. All right, concerted strike. Just, uh, just continue on the theme. Let's let's do this. I mean, we have to have something go right with these right of negations. He's got a big pile of mana here. Let, let's like at least take it slow in terms before we play the Silver Wing Vanguard. We're we're gonna find ourselves playing both of these, and I think banking up all the mana isn't that terrible. Uh, and then if he if he starts like spewing off spells here, we can see what happens. But I, I feel like if we just drop the bird and say, "Hey, I'm tapped out. Here's my selection of units. Why don't you uh, remove them in the most efficient way?" I, I don't think we're going to be happy with how that pans out. Now Ramhound's okay. We could follow up the Vanguard Sergeant. See if we can't get one of these combats to where you know they play it really slow and then they try to chain off like three spells in the middle of combat. Uh, that's what we're really hoping to get out of these right of negations. Ionia misconstrues our noble intentions. All right, can't do anything about Broadmain just yet. Let's see if the birds can do anything cool. Get ourselves into combat. Well, the one spell isn't ideal, but we, we can't just be losing this combat that miserably. Did the drum solo, was he flowed? I think he was flowed. I'm going to be able to play something out of that. I think it's okay. If it's just like one spell, it doesn't strike me as that bad. <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay. Why not? Why not? <sighs> All 
All right. Well, we're gonna lose our Silverwing Vanguard. That's about to that's about to go down. Interesting. All right. Well, maybe maybe we can get one of these another one of these juicy turns with a big right of negation again. If he's gonna come in and try and chain off a bunch of shit in the middle of combat, we can maybe pull something off. Um, just completely ridiculous this game though. It means so we can take him down to eight. Or we can come at him with eight, try and pull the broad main out of combat. I don't think I'm excited about that. But it's like, when are we going to get a better concerted strike? I think that's what we're going to try and hit. We're going to pull the broad main in. He's going to cast a bunch of spells, and then we'll try and concerted strike him down here in the middle uh, as he tries to, to take our units away. So we can let the riff happen as is. We strike down the broad main. The the riff will kill the Silverwing Vanguard, but it won't kill our van our uh, our three threes. And then now maybe he'll come in with a bunch more spells, and we can get a good right of negation uh, and just stop everything. Right? We'd really love to see him chain off some spells here. He's got five mana with three cards in hand. I don't think this is ultimately going to be successful, but... Oof. Oof. Okay. Something positive. Katarina comes in. She gets the free Blade's Edges now. So he's got some good stuff happening there, but... Oof. At least I don't think he can kill us next turn. Like, I, I guess if he's double attacking with Katarina's, it's not super ideal, but... One, one step at a time. Cythria, this is, this is exactly as I've, uh, I've kind of expected this game to come out and go. If you notice how everything went, our opening hand and end of the first turn, we drew uh, double right of negation champion strength, and then our draws on the two previous, uh, this turn and the two previous turns have been double vanguard squire Cythria. Just drawing everything in the absolute backwards order. It's been insane. This has been quite the day. Uh, this is one of those lottery ticket days as to where I don't I don't know what you're supposed to do as to whether or not you should uh, just just call it quits. And uh, she gonna flip? Not yet. But no, one of the one of those lottery ticket days to where you, you can't decide if um, you, don't scare me. you know your luck is so bad you you just stay away. There's there's no reason to to come out and get anywhere near uh, anything having to do with luck or uh, if it's the opposite, right? Uh, you know the the roulette, the roulette wheel is spun is spun black ten times in a row. It can't spin an eleventh. So let's just get out uh, let's get out the bet on red. Wow. There's gotten to one card. It's got Tibbers and Katarina. And we have champion strength that we can drop. And so, I mean... Of course, one mana short of doing everything. <laughs> Let's see where this gets us. So then he's, he's going to be able to Tibbers, one of our Scythrias. We can attack twice after that. <sighs> Damn. Just fucking savaged. Alright, so the Tibbers is taken down. We have to draw something like a concerted strike. If he gets to play Katarina twice next turn, then we're we're just dead. Ranger's Resolve might help. Drum solo, yeah. Because <laughs> as you know, as you know, if uh, you're, you're what, what would you prefer to draw on turn eleven of the game? Something that lets you draw more cards. That's what that's what makes sense to have turn up. <sighs> okay. 
can we stop me from attacking? Like, if, if we forward Demacia, he can still attack with Katarina. We have to decide if we can just get out of this turn with Ranger's Resolves, which I think we can. Maybe not. I thought we were going to kill Annie here. I forgot that this thing has the stun part attached to it. Should have should have just dropped in the Ford Demacia. Still has the mana. I don't know. I I, I, I hate to be the one to, to bitch about luck and things, but I, I I feel like these games have just been absurd today. This is... I, I don't know. If there's if there's a handful of people out there in the world that are able to, to navigate these games to wins, then... Oh, you're you're certainly better than me, but this has just been a fucking brutal day <laughs> in terms of what our deck and what our hands have been delivering to us. All right, but moving on and moving forward, I, I okay to leave up Nar Tristana. This is the aggressive version of the deck. Uh, Katarina Kale Leona is the Sunburn deck, except they aren't playing Katarina anymore. They've moved it on to Kale. Uh, I think that that's a, a terrible decision, a terrible mistake. I think it's fine. But uh, as we come down here to Zillion Zerath uh, Targon, I feel like all of our decks can just smoke this thing. And so the the one out of these that worries me the most is uh, more likely to be the Sunburn deck here. I, I feel like. Uh, everything we have lines up reasonably well uh, into Tristana. So let's start off with the elites, though. It kind of strikes me as a person that wants to start off with uh, with Tristana. I was hoping to... I think I feel like both of those matchups are good for elites, but uh, only this matchup here is the good one for, uh, for Nocturne. So I was hoping we would get to run the elites into... Uh, the Tristana deck. But he doesn't lead with it. He comes out the gates with Zillion Zerath. Let's see if we can ultimately just get punished for, <laughs> for giving Zillion no respect. Alright, so how big are we going this round? Uh, now that we drew the second elite, it's a little bit easier to find the path. We'll drop the uh, drop the Ramhound, drop the Defender, drop the Squire, bring in the squad. Hey, here's what this deck's capable of doing. <laughs> Such a change of pace, right? Such a change of pace. You play those games to where you you just don't do anything the first three turns, and then you see the more normal draws roll around. It's got a champion strength in it, yes, but it's doing a bunch of other shit in the early game. Whew, it's wild. Wild, man. Alright, well, Zerath popping the weakest enemies isn't too scary. He's just hitting our Vanguard defenders that already have tough. Let's drop in the Swiftwing Flight. I think we want to pick up Double Bird, just to have the, uh, the additional access to units, and the next turn we'll play Garen and Slam. We can hook this Rock Bear out of combat. Not feel too bad about it. My heart and soul for Would we either rather hook Zerath if we start to look at these blocks? It does let him put his 5-5 in front of Garen if we uh, if we leave it into combat? Probably not what we want. He does get to start blocking better with Zerath, but Zerath blocking our Vanguard defenders doesn't do anything. I'll take the mana gem. You are nothing. You are nothing. So see, right, Zerath doesn't get the kills onto our Vanguard defenders, so they get to they, they get to keep ruining his day. I mean, it's a real question if we want to go for a champion strength. Like, I don't know. If Zillion Zerath is playing Rite of Negation, it wouldn't surprise me if it was. Um, but it's like, are we are we close enough to winning with just the Vanguard Bannerman? I mean, we probably are. I, I think if he has to spend another mana gem on a Rite of Negation, we're we're looking pretty pretty strong.
That's funny, right? See, <laughs> seeing, seeing the Zerath bombs come in and hit our tufts. Okay. Victory one for the elites. Let's see what we can do with Nocturne, the the bane of our existence for the day. <laughs> see if we can't soul cleave allegiance into a into a miss again. Oof. What do we got? That's a pretty mistwraith heavy draw. I don't know if you <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you noticed, but we drew all of our mist wraiths. Let's get rid of this phantom butler. Uh, see if we can't find uh, anything else. Uh, I'm kind of curious if we shouldn't just say like stop at two mist wraiths and say that that's enough. You know, <laughs> you did, you you did your job. You you turned up in numbers, but let's uh, maybe pick up a wraith caller along the way. This is like now we don't even want to play him, right? We're gonna we're gonna play the arachnoid horror into Callista, and I guess having them come down on turn four isn't terrible. Yes, it's not terrible. It's a this is a pretty tempting pass. I, I could see attacking with the Callista maybe, but I feel like his deck is really gonna start to pop off if we take down the Endless Devout and he gets the sarcophagus, and we're sitting on a frenzied skitterer, and so we know on our uh, our next attack token, we're gonna be able to to take him down to the space to where he can't, you know, block. And I th I think that's gonna be a little better for us. Go. The hell was that? A predict thing? <laughs> you see, you should just start shuffling and popping up on the screen. Yeah, yeah, figure out what that is. Sure. All right. So his dudes can't block. Take him down to one. Not a terrible place to be. More shuffle things, right? So probably just look to get Nocturne on board. It, it's a little awkward in the sense that uh, you know we're we're not doing any shrinking on the upcoming turn. But I mean, we just need to get one unit in. It's a, it's a pretty big ask to have like a quicksand and a way to pop this rock bear and a way to get a full board. Like I, I, I think we're in good shape without overriding our units. Okay. When he's cycling a card, that's got to be good, right? Shouldn't be too much in the world that he can produce to get a win. All right, GG. The W has been marked. All right, victory achieved. Three wins under our belt. Two losses. On to the next one. Chain them right out. I'm so glad we don't have to wait an hour between any of these matches. It's been, it's been pretty nice. And here we are again. I, man, I, I don't know what the deal with the world is today. It's like, are, what are these Shadow Isles decks? Like, what are you expecting to turn up to where you want to bring these triple Shadow Isles lineups? It, it's like, are, are these decks particularly good against, like, the Tristana stuff? It's like the top decks of the, at least in terms of the latter at the moment, are like Rise and, and the Tristana Shadow Isles deck and, and things like that. It's so weird to me that we've ran into so much Jace today. So much uh, of the, the P and Z uh, control. It's so weird. All right, though. So we'll stick to our plan and ban out the Nora. See what we can do against this stuff. Like, I, I, I can't remember. Like, uh, I, I think across, like, the past week of laddering, you, of course, run into, like, Trundlemere a fair amount. Like, that's no, no strange thing to see happen. But 
Um, it's just been like in terms of the control decks, there's been like the the kind of rise and advent of the Lord Broadmain decks, which none of these seem very good against. And then there's also just been um, um, uh, the the more lines. This is just not. I don't know. Like I don't know if it's because of, like our position in ladder or what's happening. It's so strange to me. I'm very bamboozled if it's just a matter of uh, variance being quite weird and quite, you know, leaning towards this, or I, I didn't see any articles again come out that were being like, oh yeah, come play these the, these triple Shadow Isles lineups. <laughs> it's just, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. All right, though. Let's see how, how much we can come out here. This isn't the turrets. This is the uh, the Sentinels, right? They, they have the fearsome units of their own. I think I want to hang on to Wraith Collar. It should be decent in this match. We'll hang on to our Arachnoid Horror. See if we can't find anything else to reasonably fill out the curve. Remember, we're the ones who make progress happen. Making progress happen. Okay, fine to go ahead and get the get the takedown here. I don't I don't want him. Uh, just gaining a bunch of mana. The the damage coming out of Precious Pet is actually a, a little bit scary in the sense that uh, if he starts dropping the Sentinels, having the one health units around dying to Vile Feasts is uh, a, a little uh, potential for pain. But I can, I can sort of see an argument in not making that trade, but letting him just generate two and three mana off that guy. Sounds pretty terrible to me. Hi, right, what up, Ridge? Searching up those expensive spells. I hear you, dog. You're not blocking today, though. <laughs> You're not blocking today. You can. Burgeoning Sentinel can get a block in. We'll, we'll try and save the Skitterer for a little bit later. Uh, we're, we're going to probably have two units die to these Sentinels this turn. That's okay. He's going to have like a, a vengeance for the, the Arachnoid Horror and then get two trades with the Burgeoning Sentinels. Uh, you, have, you have to expect that that's going to come through at some point. Oh shit, yeah, they weren't, they weren't big yet though. They'll be big next time. Surprised he didn't block... The Wraith Collar with Reggie, so he could use the Sentinel a little bit later. That's interesting. I know what lurks in the shadows. But next turn we're looking okay. We'll block. We'll, we'll send in the Skitterer and the Onlooker. Given the chance, we're gonna want to trade away either the Boisterous Host or the Wraith Collar. Uh, otherwise, we're kind of stuck overriding them or leaving them on the board in the space to where they can get blocked. So if he does want to come in for an attack, I'll uh, gladly throw away at least one of our units here. Interesting. I just suspect these are, are never coming through for damage. And Callista, a little bit different. I'll, I'll pivot, you know. <laughs> I'll pivot. The the thing to note is uh, the the Sentinel is a one two, and so if she grows, she's only gonna have the two attack, and so it's not like this thing overwrites her to having three attacks. She shouldn't be able to block at any point, uh, but a little bit safer now. I wonder if he's gonna come at us with a a. Um... Okay, we don't have to worry about it anymore. It's like as he was sitting there pausing and thinking and he's already played Reggie, uh, I was wondering if he was going to come at us with a uh, ruination. <laughs> right? He was just sitting there on the nine mana. Interesting. All right, well, here comes the squad. It's going to get one block onto Wraith Collar. Looks like we got enough. Hit him for the exacties. GG. 
I was surprised he kept this deck up. The, like, the... The, the, the thing with, like, our strategy and our, our our thought was when we were coming into the Triple Shadow Wilds lineups is that they're going to ban Callista because Callista brings a uh, brings a pretty nasty matchup into the Nora deck. And then we have, like, two bad matchups with both the Sunburn and the Elites deck into Nora. And so I guess you can kind of, like, level this and say, well, uh, he's, he's going to just ban the Nora, so I'm going to leave the Nocturne deck up. But... That, that, that doesn't that doesn't strike me as something that we are going to run into a lot. All right, though, up against up against the old Trundlemere, we'll cycle away that right of negation. Maybe it'll turn itself back up at a relevant point in time. Don't need it right now, though. It's dangerous out there. Take this. Look at that, Agro Battlesmith. You survive in the day feels good, man. That feels good. Give me some of those stats. Let me dodge those avalanches. Well, he tried to dodge the avalanches. Not a bad trade, though. We get to trade our two-mana unit for his four-mana card. He doesn't get to play any ramp cards this turn. It's not bad. Not bad. What you got now? I'm ready to single combat. Oh, that's not what I was wanting to single combat. Maybe next turn, you know. <laughs> We're playing Garen next turn, 100%, and so maybe uh, he'll find a target to uh, help him get the flip. No ramp up to this point, though. Opponent play in the fair game. There it is. And a faces. Cool. We are going to boom next turn. Bring the single combat in for Garen. We're going to open attack the Jarvan onto the board. Assuming he only has one removal at that point, uh, we'll either have the flipped Garen on the board giving us the rally for the following turn, or... Uh, If he leaves uh, Jarvan around, then we still got a big boy, you know. We're swinging it in hard. Oof. Uh oh. We just picked up the right of negation. Is it gonna? Is it gonna save the day? Is it gonna do something big? Is he gonna try to bury it in Isis next turn, and we get to, we get to stop it? Same deal with feel the rush. Gladly stop it. Whatever your big spell is. <laughs> this is this is what our timely rite of negation is here for. Now, when that happens, it's skill, okay? I know we've been bitching a lot, we've been talking a lot about how 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 bad all of this is going. But when when things like this happen to us, it's actually just skill. And uh <laughs> <laughs> when, when the opponent is the one, uh, or when we have all these bad draws and, and things like that, that's when the luck is, is coming through. So now that he's tapped down to 8 mana, we don't have to worry about any of the big spells. If he has a Vengeance, that's fine. Uh, we'll let that through. But we don't have to worry about Buried in the Ice. We don't have to worry about Feel the Rush, War Mother's Call, War Mother's whatever that thing is, the big one. Uh, that's off the table. And so we're we're pretty safe from all of the big cards he can throw at us. Withering whale takes down Jarvan. Sure, we got a we got a backup Jarvan in hand, ready to get busy next turn. Stay resolute, Stay resolute my friend. We magically have that four mana behind for the right of negation. G. G. Oof. So much Shadow Isles, man. What is up with that? Where are we at? Round 7? Coming through? Coming in? 
what do we got here? We got some Trundlemere. I don't know what this Zill Zillion Ziggs but with Gnar. I think I've seen... Uh, I'm trying to think if I've seen that before. I, I don't think we ever ban whatever this is over top of Trundlemere or Darkness. And I feel like reasonable against Darkness. It's a, it's a fairly kind of like coin flippy endeavor for some of our matchups. But I, I feel like it's typically better than playing against Trundlemere. And so the, the thing with like Trundlemere is... Um, it, it, it can be uh, like a, a little painful against the, um, uh, the the likes of the elite style deck. Maybe we do just end up leaving him up. It, it's like I, I'm getting my head kind of mixed up between Darkness and the Nora decks. Like I, I worry about the Nora decks because it's hard to just send all of your units in, but uh, Darkness is a, is a little bit different from that. And I, I think kind of the, the question you should ask yourself against that, I guess, is just like, how many one health units do you have? And we don't really have that many, right? The, that's the way the, the, the damage flows coming out of the darkness decks. I think we can leave it up. I think if this is the space to where, like, we thought we were going to get two Noxus decks. Oh, wow. We do get two Noxus decks. I was like, if both of our Noxus decks were going to stay up, I, I feel like that would be good against Trundle. But uh, when that falls, it's like maybe the thing we need to think about with Trundle is, um, I mean, the, the Mistwraith deck should be strong there. The, the game like just 100% has to come down to whether or not they draw Avalanche, right? If they're able to Avalanche away like four dudes and you're going to lose. But hmm, that's tough. That's a tough space. All right, though. Reasonable draw. Wouldn't be a bust draw without a turn nine card in your hand. And so <laughs> Shunpo turning up to the party a little early, but a reasonable start outside of that. <laughs> you say, I got you, fam. I got you, fam, in case you need... There we go. There we go. Decimate turning up. That's what I thought we needed. But here, we're going to want to lead off with Solari Soldier. If he plays a 2-1, like if he plays the dude that generates the landmark... Uh, I, I don't want to be trading our rear guard on the first turn, and so the so the soldiers guaranteed a good combat here. We can follow up with the rear guard next round. Who knows? Maybe he'll play a ruin runner, and we'll get to uh, say so you can't block, and you, just your opponent gets to pick and choose every kind of combat thing you do. <laughs> Maybe that'll turn up. So I think we want to drop the rear guard here. Uh, we, we have the choice to play uh, a shield bear, but he runs into problems next turn, right? He has the the two two coming onto the board that can take him down, and you know we might be able to get a little bit of future value uh, coming from the sun guardian. Now we do have a choice if we want to kind of pivot and go with the shield bear. I don't think so. Uh, I think we want to go sun guardian here. It's going to start mattering kind of how big our units are. Um, because I, I think we're going to start, like, towering into zigs, and all of our kind of 2-2 two, two, and 3-3 three, three units aren't just just not going to do it, not going not gonna to cut it. We got the Nox and Telstones. Could be interesting next turn, you know, like, generating a Sharpened Resolve or generating a Whirling Death. A, a lot of power to come out of that that's... A little unexpected. Snap past that one. He was he was not excited to uh, to to see this set of units come through. What do we put the the bonus on? Maybe we do send it like this. I want to get everybody in combat this round because we're gonna be playing a Nox and Telstones. But um, yeah, that turned out okay. My my ultimate concern here is like I'm gonna go for the Sharpened Resolve. It would be nice to just like Whirling Death at the Ziggs. But if he gets to like Quicksand this turn, like Quicksand is the combat trick that I fully expect to see out of this deck. And if we say Whirling Death off of the Sun Guardian into Ziggs and he quicksands, that's going to be a problem. But if he um, Whirling or if he quicksands our Pigeon to, to make his Ziggs not die, 
then the unit's still going to stick around, and that's okay. Now we should be lined up for a decent Shunpo on this turn. Going to lose our Shield Bearer, that kind of sucks, but uh, we can recover a little bit here. Fucking seriously playing Shellfolk? Oh, Shellfolk is not what I expected. I think we're still okay, but... You're, re you're required to say curse words anytime that stupid fucking card turns up. <laughs> it's, it's a requirement. Alright, well we at least got the meteor shower in before the pranks started. So we can get this dumb shit out of here. I don't think this is going to be a deck with combat tricks in it, so I think we should be in a safe enough space. But, who knows? The, the, the Shell Folk is not the card I expected to turn up here, so who knows? Why not Why not have uh, why, why not have Shape Stones in here? Alright, behold the divine power of the sun, bro. We just gotta get a couple more points of damage in here. Should be getting, you know, uh, exceptionally close to finishing this off with a Shunpo. As we, as we face down all of the otters. <laughs> maybe, maybe we need to take that statement back. But, feels like we're getting close at least. I think we can leave Ziggs on the board. He's not doing anything here. He's going to send in the otters. Alright. So if he has a second Shell Folk here... Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Didn't prank our Shunpo, that's good. We should still be able to cast it, but... I, I don't really want him to know about it, and... If it costs nine mana, it's gonna be a be a bit of a pain. But he sinks everything into decimate. Now we got our chance to to lol him. How does this deck even win with shell folk? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Kahiri. Interesting. Alright, it's, it's got to be obvious that something wild's about to go down, but <laughs> as, he, as he taps down to three mana, I, I think we're ultimately quite safe. Kahiri. Oh, not on my radar, man. Oh. Dang. The second decimate. All right. We'll try. <laughs> We're real close to having the 10 mana to play the second decimate, so that means something, right? That means something. The fuck are all these? Did he predict into Kahiri and that's why that one grew? I guess that's what this stuff does. Oh my god. My, my brain's not big enough to understand all this. <laughs> it's just not big enough, man. Alright, so he loses all of his units. That's good, right? And we just start dropping 10 mana decimates and, uh, and calling it a third shell folk. Not bad. Something created it? What even creates this thing? Hmm. I don't know. And Cat turns up. I was I was wondering if we were going to run into a space to where uh, we, we didn't play the Pale Cascade to take the opponent down to one, and now uh, we're, we're not able to 
kill opponent with a blade's edge. I was curious if that was going to come up. Did a little bit. I got you, dog. <laughs> Alright, now how do we feel about playing units on this next turn? I, I, I mean, it seems fine. He concedes anyways, but... Like... We kinda have to get the win right there. I don't know. That's his, his third his third Shell Folk. I think if we kill that Shell Folk, then maybe... Maybe it's still okay? I don't know. That's... Oh, I'm not excited to play against that deck again. <laughs> it, it seems like it should be a reasonable match for everything, but... Uh, I just... I, I hate that card so much. Alright, what do we got though? A big Mist Wraith draw? Is that how we want to, to keep everything? It's... The Risen Mist strikes me as just being too expensive. Let's hang on to the Mist Wraith and look for other... Uh, other cheaper units. Much better. This isn't a, a game where we need to just be generating a bunch of value. So how are we going to sequence this down? Uh, I, I think the Mist Wraiths are okay. Like if we're going to play a Mist Wraith here, a Callista next turn, Double Mist Wraith two turns from now, that's a, a lot more damage than dropping the Arachnoid Horror. It, it does uh, get a little bit weaker to, like, Mystic Shots, though. Don't think we have to worry about this guy being a three attack. There's no way this deck plays equipment, right? It's definitely not playing... Uh, definitely not playing Darken. And Wraith Caller. Alright, so the Time Bomb's gonna pop. I, I just didn't want to drop double Mist Wraith into the Wraith Caller. Get a, a little bit more uh, protection in, in leaving this one on the board. Now it is kind of interesting in that um, can look to drop in Nocturnes, but that's something for two turns from now. Alright, double Mist Wraith it is. And then if he has a another AoE, it's gonna flip our Callista. We gotta kind of decide if we want to preserve the Wraith Caller with the Soul Cleave in hand. I don't, I don't think so. It doesn't that doesn't strike me as being special? Got him. That struck him as being special. <laughs> All right, GG. All right, next battles. See how much of the the Shadow Isles turn up again. <laughs> it's really it's it's blown my mind. I haven't I really did not expect that much to turn up, but reasonable enough set for us here. Uh, we're in pretty easy ban on the Nora Viego. Uh, we can get that out of the way. Everything we have should be reasonably strong up against Rise and then uh, the Katarina Gwen. It'll be a little bit up in the air, but uh, definitely feel. A little bit better about these, and this is more along the lines of what I was kind of expecting these lineups to look like as a uh, you know somewhat aggressive deck, a somewhat mid rangey deck, and then a control deck like coming out of uh, coming out of Rise, and so we were uh, much better set up <laughs> to deal with lineups in that fashion than uh, some of the previous ones we've seen. But reasonable enough start up against the Red Gwen. We'll see if it's a more kind of classic-y Red Gwen or uh, if it's more in the space of the opulent Foyer deck. But at the start, uh, I'd rather be uh, kicking it off with the, the Precious Pet. I don't want to be trading um, boisterous toasts here on the first turn. If we can just stay out of combat the whole time, that would be great. Uh, or eventually, if we get to play a defensive boisterous host, that's, that's pretty okay. All right, things push on. Say what up to Callista. If he didn't have that unit on the previous turn, the 3-1, it makes me feel a little bit better for this round. The 
Arachnoid Sentry is okay. Ravenous Flock would make this turn kind of a bust, but if we just come in and trade and just have to use the Callista a little bit later, that would be more ideal. Well, sad day, girl. <laughs> Hopefully this, this secondary copy will, uh, will do the work we need. So let's see if he's got the Gwen for the turn. Does not. Are we ever going to get to get like the tick up on Callista? I don't think we do. Let's just go ahead and play the Boisterous Host. Uh, that's probably going to be the one blocking. Interesting. Just two damage we can pretty safely ignore. Now we can bring in Callista and Burst Arisen Myths. Still get to save the, the Frenzied Skitterer for later. That was a, a fantastic outcome for us. That was a all around kind of a kind of a turd of a turn for the opponent. All right, we still don't have any hallowed, so we can slam all the dudes into combat. Don't have to worry about the order too much as long as Callista's to the right. What you got? Looks like he's got a little bit more action here, huh? Vile feast. All right. Callista's getting ready to flip, and it's like, we are getting close to a harrowing turn, right? We can uh, harrowing on our next attack token um, on turn 7 when we have 10 mana. I haven't really lost any units, though. It's not a, a particularly scary one. We've lost uh, a unit that can be blocked in the Boisterous Host. We've lost, uh, I guess, a Callista's in there, which is somewhat strong, but it's not one of these big uh, game-ending, game-breaking style uh, harrowings that we'd like to see. It's just a neck. Right, Katarina coming in. We gotta start to shrink him. I'm, I'm curious what the the Hallow Dancers is gonna bring to the table here. I'm not ultra scared of it, and I, I do want to. Uh, be losing out on our frenzied skitterers. If we're going to come into the next turn and look to just uh, play the harrowing, then having the skitterer die is a, a bit of a bonus for us. Downside here is we can't uh, actually kill the eternal dancers. We ever just like want to to try and get out of this next turn with an open attack? Like let's say. We do a little bit of blocking here. We end up black spearing down the Eternal Dancers. I think we should leave Callista back on defense. And then next turn, we say try to skitter or the Eternal Dancers out of combat. Like, I just worry that our harrowing's not going to be enough. I guess we're not really getting blown out in terms of damage, though. <laughs> He's realistically just going to have one blocker. I guess you could play Katarina. She'll be a three attacker. Uh, we'll shrink her with the, the spider, but then uh, she would be able to potentially shoot down one of our one of our units coming out of the harrowing. Hmm. Interesting. And then just the second skitterer. We have access to so many units here. Like, who does Callista bring back? Is it going to be another spider? It is. That's just too good. Let's be real. Let the begin. So he can make an attack. It's nowhere near lethal, and then we're going to get the, the, the big hit with the resummons on this follow-up attack. I think that's great. Not real keen on blocking here. I don't want to lose our units to a... Um, I was going to say, I don't want to lose them to a Ravenous Flock, but I, I guess if the, the Eternal Dancers are big enough to just block here anyways, then we got to get in front of it. Not as awesome as I was hoping. I was really not wanting to, to have to block here. Let's see what he does. I mean, we do have the Black Spear behind. If he wants to get uh, overly clever, we have something to do, but we can't, like, Black Spear the Eternal Dancer and then re-attack with the Spider. Okay. Oh, 
We have exactly 12 coming in, so hopefully, hopefully that'll do it. Oh, exactly 13. Even better. <laughs> I forgot we had a point of hallowed there. But. GG. Just a little scary. Yeah, there's there's a, a lot of opportunity for interaction coming out of him. and uh, I definitely don't want to have to be playing defensive, uh, defensive harrowings. But cool. Victory unlocked. Nice job, Fearsomes. Let's see if Garen and friends can stand up here. This is a little bit of a worse matchup. Uh, not trying to, you know, come out here and block and stuff. <laughs> Blocking's for losers, you know. But reasonable start. We can get the, these Vanguard Squires popping off real fast, especially if we pick up another cheap play. We'll pass on this. We, we can maybe get a little bit better out of Scythria if we find a, a unit booster along the way. Didn't turn up. I think this is still fine. The next turn, we're going to succession into double squire. So, we're going to have a pretty big board. Not the card on the enemy radar today, huh? <laughs> not, not expecting to see the successions coming at you. I don't blame you. I don't blame you, my dude. The bust special coming down. The quietus. Okay. My journey continues. Here come the stats. So Gwen will be, you know, a bit upsetting. We don't have a great answer to her, but um, she's a bit weak on the Garen turn. Right? If we get to go two turns from now and start dropping Garen in. See, nothing to do this turn. Real bummer. De definite bummer for opponent as well, though. Are we just going to go for Garen? Like, we did just pick up the Bannerman, but what what spell is he really going to play here? I don't think we have any spells to worry about. Oh, wow. Wow. I mean, I'm thinking for the, looking for the proper emote. <laughs> I, need a, I need a sad emote to drop for opponent. This is not... This is not good. This is not good. How do we even go in here? Let's just go for stats. We're going to open attack next turn with Jarvan. Just don't want any... Uh, any damage on our units. I don't want these guys to be falling to like a ravenous flock and then we'll go and uh, Take in the open attack next turn So I feel you dog. We had uh, we had some of those draws earlier. It's a little bit of a, a give-and-take Hopefully Magi Carp 9000 uh, Goes and gets the goes and gets the lottery tickets if they need them, you know <laughs> uh, I'd love to hear that he's uh, he, he's making it through the day acquiring all the funds via lottery ticket. Uh, but here we got Nora. That's going to be our ban. I'm fine enough to do battle uh, against Leona uh, Katarina. That's, uh, oh, he's not, that's right. Leona Kale, my bad. Uh, I was about to say it's the, it's the version of the deck I don't like, <laughs> but uh, I'm happy enough to battle it. And then, excuse me, um, Karma Master Yi is not something I ever, I ever give respect to. So reasonable start. It's kind of tempting to hang on to the Solari Priestess, but uh, I feel like running into the Kale version, we are going to be the aggro in this matchup, and so I, I don't really want to. Um, I, I don't really want to have those like slower plays running around. So here, this is fine. We wanted to play the 3-3 first. They have units like Crimson Pigeon and Legion Rearguard, Legion Saboteurs that don't interact with it well. Uh, he got to drop the big boy there. It's okay. Now he's got Solari Soldier coming in. Take the shutdown from our end, and then we should get a good combat next turn. Well, Sun Guardian, don't mind if I do. You got one too, dog? <laughs> How about you, fam?
I have to imagine if he had one, he would have just snapped it off. Seems like, seems like this should be pretty okay-ish for us. Oh, what do I know? What do I know? Oh, slamming the squad. I assume he's going to put the Sun Guardian in front of our Shield Bear and then maybe put a block in front of ours, but feels like we're, we're just going to have the opportunities to grow. I, I like how our, our Daybreaks are shaping up. I, I think this is okay. I don't really want to be in a spot to where um, we aren't presenting any... Uh, aren't presenting any threats. Now we should have a space to get, you know, pretty good return out of Solari Priestess as she uh, faces down this board. Is she the one we want to go with? We can just drop a shield bear. Uh, we're 100% playing Leona next turn, so... Let's just come in with the shield bear. My my thinking with this is if opponent's going to actually have a pale cascade, uh, I, I want to be able to put the uh, the shield bear in front of the sun guardian and have it win. And so if he has a pale cascade, it's going to have the chance to survive against a Solari priestess. Not what I'm really hoping for. Uh oh, here's a, here's a here's a little bit of nugget of knowledge for you outside of the the, the realm of the game here. Uh, I, I've got my cats on that automatic feeder, and so it, it's four minutes away from feeding time. It's four minutes away for the automatic nuggets to just start to drop, and I got a cat clawing at the door trying to get in. And so, <laughs> little, little does that little does that critter know what what's going to happen to their life if they uh, <laughs> if they come into the room and get locked in. They're gonna they're not going to get any nuggets, and so. We'll see. We'll see what the... I feel bad. I feel bad. All right. If that's what you want. Lessons will be learned. <laughs> this this day will go down in infamy as uh, one of this poor kitty's worst ever. But here, let's take down this big friend. And then is there a reason to attack with this other stuff? He's going to get a good block with the shield bear. I think that's okay. As long as the shield bear is not killing our sun guardian. Uh, I think I'm fine with the rest of these attacks. And so let's just see if we can't come in and clear out some board. Interesting. Okay. I was curious if there was going to be like a Nox and Fervor uh, to put damage onto our Leona. Like he Nox and Fervors, cracks her barrier, then leaves her with one health. But taking us from 20 to 17 with a Nox and Fervor, I'm going to go ahead and make a uh, make a make a s assumption that that is not uh, ideal. <laughs> and so I think we're 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 really just shooting super far ahead now. He's got Leona. We've got a, a stun in the back line. Right, he hits our stun guardian. Okay, we play our priestess. Stuns his good unit. We get a bit of follow-up. And then on the next turn, we get double stuns out of the Sunhawk. That sounds fantastic. Going Traveler here. I don't think we need the Meteor Shower as a, uh, a, a removal spell. It doesn't really kill anything. So... We'll go big for the Traveler. Maybe we pick up a, an 8-cost Celestial or something. Have a good day with that. Have a good day with this Katarina as well. <laughs> that, was a, that was a pretty choice draw here. Just run him over. So that'll bring the stun onto Sun Guardian. Not a big deal. All right, let's take down the unit we can take down. He'll get a decent block with his shield bear onto something. That's okay. Deal a little bit of damage, and then most importantly, we're getting that flipped Katarina back into action. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pop off this backline shield bear. Ideally, when it when it comes to these blades edges, we'll maybe be popping a barrier off of Leona, getting her into a nasty combat, but. Uh, if that's not going to be the case, I would like to get the free kill on this unit in the back line. Another priestess. Cool. Protect our people. 
you get a stun, I get a stun. I was looking for the Obliterate. Same kind of deal. I don't think we want Meteor Shower. We'll take the Golden Sister. Uh, just a, another mountain of card advantage here. It, a lot of times it can be uh, really relevant getting that extra elusive, but I don't think it's going to matter in this one. We're pushing further and further ahead. Uh-oh. I think she heard it. Go on. Go get your nuggets. <laughs> right on the dot, right on the minute, she started started freaking out and looking how to looking how to get out of the room. <laughs> Poor kitty, she's gonna be in the back of the line though. She's gonna be in the back of the line. She's not gonna get the the first choice on the on the nuggets. <laughs> Poor kitty. Poor kitty. And so here, this is interesting. The uh, the the. The sunburn decks, like depending on how fast they're able to come out of the gates, or what's really going to be uh, our, our major issue here, and having the wraith collar be able to generate, you know, a, a pretty solid two for one would be nice. But uh, I'm kind of skeptical of how quickly. Like if we, if our hand started with a mist wraith, right? If we had a mist wraith in it, and we knew on turn four uh, we were going to be growing, then I think that would have been okay. But in this space, it just kind of strikes me as. Um, we're not going to get to use it. So here I'm playing the Mist Wraith. I suspected he was going to have a way to shut this down. And so I went ahead and played our slightly weaker unit. Uh, we missed out on a point of damage here, which is a little upsetting. But uh, hopefully it's not the, the make or break moment of the game. We'll leave this guy here for now. We don't have great answers to him. Callista turns up. Well, that's one way to start trying to get ahead. Wandering Shepherd. That's standard. I like it. I mean, I, I've been a, a pretty big fan of the Wandering Shepherd these days, but not a card I was expecting. Playing all that Pantheon and Varus over the over the past week has got me really excited about the uh, the Wandering Shepherd. But not today, not for me. Leona comes in. We're gonna. Well, I guess we don't have to. We don't have to drop the spider onto her. I'm gonna get the stun. I was worried about him getting a um, getting a hook into Le into Callista and taking her down, but that's not that's not gonna be a problem. We can get him. This is a this is an interesting space. He's not gonna realize that we can we can actually take down the Leona here if we want to legionary charge. Like is Nocturne close enough to being scary next round or can we just hook in leona with nocturne and get the kill it's if he has another daybreak and gets the stun it shuts down the nocturne play but she's going to be small enough okay we can let that go like if we once we give her vulnerable we can still uh, come in and try and hook her down with callista all right i'm on board And then we want the stun to go on to Nocturne, right? We don't want him to play a unit, the stun comes in, and then the stun hits Callista. We want Callista still being able to uh, to summon this additional unit. Stun onto Nocturne, sounds okay. We got a dog. Say they 
He never has a way to just deal a point of damage, right? <laughs> that's, a, that's a valid question. Uh, Alright. Oh, he shouldn't get to deal damage to Callista. Even if he does, he shouldn't get the kill. Like, if he has a Nox and Fervor over onto our Frenzied Skitterer, he, he shouldn't be able to, uh, to to kill our Leona in combat here. Right, that's good stuff. That's a powerful board, assuming he doesn't have anything else to do here. Put something in and pulled it back. Not sure what that would be. Is it good knocks in fervor? It doesn't seem like a good fervor. Interesting, and he puts the equipment onto his can't block unit. I wonder if he's just just all in on trying to get the kill here. So if he takes us down to seven, he's going to have to try and kill us with, like, double decimate. Hmm. I don't, I don't think we need to risk it. Like, I, I feel like we're, we're far enough ahead to where this isn't really a problem. Might. So that takes us to seven. Okay. Enough. It's enough to get it done. GG. All right, getting getting into those money rounds now. Let's see if we can't take down. We got one shot, you know, one shot into getting that sweet title, getting uh, all the recognition in the world about how amazing and special we are. <laughs> Let's see what we can do. And so, Leona, Leona Kindred, I'm not really sure what that's going to be, but uh, I think that I would rather do battle with that than some of these other meta matchups. And now we're back into this space as to where, you know, we, we have a couple, I don't, like, I just don't think he ever bans our elite stack, and we have a couple of shots at um, just sending a single Noxus deck towards the Trundlemere. And if, like, if it's one of these weird things where we actually get to keep both Noxus decks up, that feels pretty good. But uh, I feel pretty bad if we have to send elites into it. And so that's where I'm just going to send the ban out again. I'm going to take down the, the Trundle Trindamir. And we'll try and battle through these other two options. There's the, the less surprising ban there, though. I, I, uh, it's, it's been odd to me when people are leaving the, the Mist Wraiths up. All right, so off to battle against Darkness. So what do we got? Reasonable collection of early game bros. I think we can hang on to all three. Cycle Leona away for something else, then. Not a bad curve. Still going to bring in the turn one soldier. Having a 2-2 a on board next turn is not super exciting, but uh, I, I want to get this aggression in, and it... It battles everything in the deck and still survives. Like, if we trade it for Conchologist, it doesn't feel super good. But um, uh, there, there's no unit he plays that just outright wins that combat. I'm not used to seeing Junk Construct in Sin of Agar, though. That's a little odd to me. See if he comes in with a dude. I'd like to get this Sunhawk down. I want to be attacking with everybody next turn. Conchologist is enough. So the, the thing to kind of keep in mind with this deck is it has... It, it typically plays Quietus, right? That's another reason. It doesn't feel good just trading away that unit on the first turn of the game, but uh, it tends to be the only thing that he can actually hit with a Quietus. And then after that... Things deal one point of damage, so they'll be like go hards, group shots, uh, pokey sticks, uh, that kind of thing, and you know vile feasts, whatever. And then after that, it's like vengeance and many more. If there's nothing in the middle uh, that hits things like the sunhawk or even the shield bearer, and so our unit should be pretty safe here from removal. Curious, was that a vengeance coming in for the sun guardian? 
yeah, I hope we, I hope we get such a boom with the Pale Cascade. It feels so nice. <laughs> it's so nice if he tries to do something damage-based and we just get out with the Pale Cascade. Interesting. Interesting. Well, he's going to take our Decimate, but we do still have six burn in hand. <laughs> Had to stop and check out Troll Scavenger. Make sure it wasn't the, the formidable unit. That guy turns up on occasion, and it is annoying. But yeah, pretty close to lethal. Got him at, got him at eight. See how this one goes. We could have looked to say like Pale Cascade the Pigeon, but I think we might be grinding here just a little bit more. Reporting in. We made it. Loof number two. I was about to say so much for the burn plan, but cycling out Leona. It's kind of a sad cycle there. She'd be pretty strong in this space. Getting a, a, a stun and a hook. Getting a, a little mini two-for-one, if you will. Katarina. Never. Ooh. <laughs> that's, that's, why we, that's why we let the, the unit fall to quiet us. He said, take the baits. Take the baits. It's Katarina time. Oh, how sick would that be if we get, a, get another little safety on our Katarina here? He's playing a slow spell, and we get to Pale Cascade through it. Like, if he tries to quiet us Katarina... And we get to Blade's Edge of the Conchologist and hit her with Pale Cascade to survive it. So huge. So huge. Alright, well, here's the combat squad. What do we got? So far, it looks like we're taking him to five. It's got to be a vengeance onto Katarina, right? Ooh, a lightning rush. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Do your thing, girl. <laughs> Do your thing. There we go. I'm sorry you had to fall Crimson Pigeon, but the, the Pale Cascade was here for the greater good. Now we're hopefully ready to pop. We got uh, the, the Blade's Edge for Katarina. We got the Nox and Fervor to be at four damage. Uh, hopefully we can just play Katarina next turn. Probably kill him with the combat, but if he has a I don't know, ruination or something, then we can still kill with the burn. Oh no, we're losing Katarina. Oh, <laughs> our, our plans have been dashed. I, I should have realized the aloof was going back into hand, but ideally we have enough units here just to close out the game. Ideally. So I think the only thing to make note of on this upcoming attack, we don't want anything to fall to uh, to one health, right, as we're attacking with the Crimson Pigeon. I don't want our units dying to, like, Vile Feast or anything here. I want to uh, ensure that his Pokey Sticks and the like don't stop damage from coming through. So, I was going to load it up on the bird. I guess we'll put it onto Sun Guardian here. He's only got two attack units on the board. All right, we got an incoming mountain of burn. Do not. Okay. Well done, squad. Okay. Time for the elites to do their thing.
So who we got here? This is not the opener we're looking for. <laughs> Just get rid of all that expensive stuff. Look for something a little bit cheaper. Didn't quite find it. Didn't quite find it, but... Hopefully that's not our death knell here. Maybe we can find it too. Uh, is this going to be our game again? Is this going to be what happens to us a second time? Trusty Ramhound. He's so susceptible to damage. I think we got to just drop it. Like being at the at the four mana place next turn to where if we pick up a three drop, like right if we hit a Vanguard Sergeant, then we can still play the Vanguard Squire. Sucks to leave him like open to damage like this, but he, he's got to be at like risk for pokey sticks or whatever, kind of whichever way we go about it. Interesting to see him playing Go Hard though. You don't, you don't see go hard too often out of darkness. Let us take a peek at light beneath the waves. All right, aggro conchologist coming in. I like it. And a Garen. Well, as they say. <laughs> It kind of, it kind of is what it is. We we can like build up to this free Vanguard Squire. It's just it, it sucks so much with this turn to pass and uh, him just get like that natural full bank and be pretty happy about it. And so, excuse me, it's like I'm kind of eyeballing this board with you know, the Swiftwing flight and everything, but I it just doesn't feel great having to stall out for that long. Yeah, this is. Pretty bad for the home team here. Not not what we're trying to do by any stretch of the means. I think we want to go for the double bird. Like, I, I know that it's not that great. We can look next turn, I guess, to... Like, if we want to pick up Fleet Feather Tracker and then follow up with Bannerman. It just feels like opponent's removal all seems to be one for one. Like, we haven't seen a Withering Whale up to this point. And I feel like we can probably get, you know, two spells out of the double bird. And we just need time here. So I think we want to pick up the double bird. Also gives us the space to where, if we really want to this next turn, we can leave Rite of Negation up. So we have the three spell bank. We could just play the, the bird if we want. Or if we get a cheap play, uh, a Battlesmith could be on the table. He gets, a, he gets an elite of his own. I mean, it's not a bad set of stats here. We have two winning combats, uh, or I guess a, a win, a tie, and a bounce, but we'll have the opportunity for more strength next round. This can't be the right of negation, right? Well, there's the AoE. <laughs> I mean, he, he knew it was coming at some point, right? Alright, well, our deck gets to start doing its thing, finally. We can at least uh, start flooding the board with stats. We have a, a bit of better protection here in the Ranger's Resolve, so we don't have to leave four mana up. And, you know, I, I don't entirely get what this guy's playing, but... If we get to dodge something like Des and Ada, right? If he tries to go for the big AoE round, then we have some protection with the right, as opposed to just saving a couple of the smaller units there. But ideally now, we're just going to be able to build up pretty big. Right? His, his damage-based removal shouldn't be that good, and we can hopefully... Um, uh, hopefully power through here with stats. We probably just got to save the right of negation for a pack your bags, right? I think that that's what it's going to come down to now. I'll write my own story. We can do that. We can uh, we can wait. There's the go hard. Do we risk it here? I think just losing out on the units, okay. Like I, I know he has to like play a card draw and then pick up the additional half of the spell, but. I, I think at this point it's just too risky to risk a pack your bags. But we'll get Garen on board. 
Uh, we've got plenty of stats. We can send in the right of negation. He's nowhere near killing us, and so I think this is this is safe. Something coming in. It'll be a, a vengeance for poor Garen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it happen. I, I think I have thoroughly decided that my game plan is going to be right of negation is not going to be played on a card that does not pack your bags, and so we'll, we'll just let. I mean, gosh, that's that's tough though, man. Like our, uh, our, our Garen is almost big enough. To, to kind of like punch through it and just survive it. You lack subtlety. Spring does not pity winter. Like Jarvan survives it, Garen's going to survive it if we give him another plus one plus one. And then we have like the tough thing in hand, so even our Vanguard Bannerman will survive it. <sighs> okay. I don't think he has it yet, though. He would have played it, right? If he's in that space to where he already has, like, multiple copies of Gohard in his hand, uh, he would have already played it. So, the, the five damage AoE, right? Garen survives. I guess the Bannerman doesn't survive anymore, but uh, we got a, we got another Bannerman that'll get him big enough. Luck, a thing. Elf, that's not ours. Rip Daddy Jarvan. There's the pack your bags. God. So close to being in front of that. We knew <laughs> it was coming. We knew that thing was there, but... We, we still have a lot of strength on the board here. Our Garen's about to flip. He's out of mana, so we can't stop him from uh, getting the strike in next turn. And let's see. We got a lot of big draws in here still. Sithri is not the biggest draw, but... She at least comes on board along with the Bannerman. Counting on you, Garen. You gotta, you gotta put in the work today. Is this really gonna be a ruination? Is that, is that how, is that how things go? Vengeance. Okay. I don't know. I mean, I, I was. That's tough. The, this would this would feel a lot different if we just just played that bannerman and had the additional unit on board and survived with tough. Hmm. Now we just have like a ton of stuff we have to worry about. We still got a lot of good cards in our deck, but this is scary, scary moments. I would have much rather that tough stop to pack your bags. <laughs> that would have felt way better. Way better. But we still got the chance to get a little bit wider here. And if we pick up something like Champion Strength next turn, we might be able to, to get some nastiness there. Hi, right, Vanguard Sergeant. You got to do the work today. Make the hurt your weapon. <clears throat> the Demacian soldier is worth ten foes. What do we have coming in here? The nice thing with this for Demacia is it makes all of our units lethal. And so, ideally, he's going to have to throw everything away. It would be a lot cooler if <laughs> if he just didn't have any uh, any units on the board. But at least how this one stands, we should be getting a kill on either a Senna or on a Vagar. I, just, I don't think we're going to have enough left over at this point. Oh, and the box to go with it. Okay. Whew, that's tough. That's tough. I mean... 
giving giving up our width for that Garen, I I just thought we were gonna be able to have the time to outdo pack your bags, right? He's got he's got that one the one copy, or I, I guess there's like you know five or six copies in the deck, but he, I I swore that if he had it in hand, he would have just played it that turn, and so it feels like he either drew it naturally the next turn or he drew it off that aloof. I don't feel like he uh, had it in hand, and so that's a whew, that's a tough one. But here, up against Leona Kindred, I feel like Garen is probably a little too expensive of a keep, but with a 1-2 curve, I'm okay to hang on to Bannerman. He gives us a, a nice opportunity to uh, get a ton of stats out quickly. Not a terrible single combat. Not a terrible one. No turn to play. Steady blaze. A bad set of draws there. No, <laughs> no, no complaints from this side of the table. I was hoping there wouldn't be a quietus. He had, he just drew it. That was the card that came out of the left of his hand. He would have definitely played quietus on one of our other two units earlier if he had it. He's going to three bank into Kindred. It's fine. We should be able to take Kindred down with one of our... Um, one of our cards in a single combat. Ooh, he just doesn't have it. Ooh. That's good. That's good. I don't know what kind of nasty spells we're supposed to expect out of this, but I, I, I feel like we we have to pounce, right? I want to play the Silverwing Flight. I, I think I want to take the bird. Uh, well, <laughs> taking... Taking the bird is not uh, not as uh, clear as it should be. Take the, the Fleet Feather Tracker so we can just play it along with the Bannerman. So even if he plays Leona here, she's not ultimately super scary with her stun. It's just going to stun the Vanguard Squire. Yeah, I think this is good. A symbol worth fighting for. And then he just passes with eight mana up. Interesting. Alright. Well, here comes the squad. Seems like this is pretty good position to be in. I don't know, man. I've been in a worse position before. <laughs> this one this one seems pretty decent. He just has so much mana. Like, I can't imagine he, he's not playing some amount of removal here, but just seems like such a such a strong space. Wow. Got to do something fast. Is this really going to be a deck with the ruination? That's what's been worrying me about all these Shadow Isles decks. We haven't seen I uh, haven't seen the Ruination up to this point. So he's got to do something with the Kindred, right? He has to spend some amount of mana here. Wow. Wow. Okay. Send that squad into the left. What's even... You got a, like, Withering Whale or something here? Hey, is that enough? It would take him up to 12, and then he would take 10? Guess it's enough. He's face palming and not happy about it, and so. Sorry, fam. <laughs> Sorry, fam. And okay, so it feels good. We get to give you that that full amount of value. I, these were uh, the 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 runs back in Expedition that were were so nice for you. You know, you weren't very happy if we just started off O2. You were probably kind of okay if we started off uh, with a seven and O. But when we're out here giving you the full amount of value that you can get, the full collection of possible wins and or losses, the 13-game expedition uh, is what it was back in the day. Feels kind of nice to have a little bit of throwback there, getting into this final battle with everything on the line. So let's jump in, see what happens. See a little bit of rise. Did we play this guy earlier? What's the deal with this, <laughs> this Zerazillion thing? I don't know. 
But we're definitely getting rid of the stupid Shellfolk deck. This was the second Shellfolk deck, wasn't it? The Zerath Zillion? I don't quite remember. I don't quite remember, but... F that card so much, man. <laughs> Let's see what we can do. Starting off with a little sunburn. We got a, we got a one and a three. Two burn spells. The burn can go away. Jump on in. Again, I, now that I know a little bit better against this deck, I think we should maybe be starting with Legion Rearguards here. Uh, again, like the, the worry in playing a Legion Rearguard in that space is that he's going to drop the um, like the 2-1 that generates a landmark. You typically see it in the Ziggs decks, right? Uh, and then you don't want to be having your Rearguard trade away with our 1-drop, so we play the Solari Soldier. But... It doesn't strike me as a deck that's going to have a, a lot in the way of um, a, a lot in the way of uh, like one drops like that. If this is the Shell Folk deck again, but I could have considered a block against Zillion. That strikes me as weird. I think he's just going to hit us with a. Um, I, I think he was just going to hit us with a. Uh, time bomb, like trying to set us up with some one health units. And so I, I was a little worried to have that come out, but maybe we should have just gone ahead and put the damage onto Zillion. Hmm. All right, no play for this turn, but get to start coming at him with Ravoon's next round. Now he's got big units. That's so weird to me. <laughs> That's so strange. But if he attacks with a 5-5, five five, uh, I'm more than willing to knock some Telstones in front of it. We can throw the Sun Guardian in front um, and have it get the um, the plus 3, plus 2 from the Sharpened Resolve. Alright, here comes the Battle Squad. Say why? Well, yes, I would like to get involved with combat. All right, let's see if we can't take down the big boy there. All right, Sun Guardian lives, and so he's got two units up. That's fine, but I mean. This could be the world where we start dropping Eye of Rahorox, and uh, we, we are in this space to where if we get to stun two of his units and then Shunpo, that, that should be pretty tough for him to uh, to get around. He may end up this turn with a Rock Bear at the end of the day, but I think I'm okay with this. Definitely getting some dudes out here. Raise your weapon, Can't be excited about attacking into Ravoon, though, right? It's so big. You're so meaty, my friend. Haven't I, been here before? I think we're just going to have to be swinging in with five sixes, but... If we get the two stuns on his, you know, crappier units, he's going to have to block our Ravoons with his better units. And then uh, on his turn, if we want to come and swing out with Shunpo's, we have a bit of opportunity there. I have Rahorok number two. <laughs> he says, he says, you're bringing the landmarks. I got a, I got a landmark too, my friend. I got a landmark too. How do we want to go about this? Uh, so, if we attack with everybody, he's going to put the 5-5 five five in front of the Sun Guardian, then his blocks on everything else are kind of bad. So I think we can get the Legion Rearguard in. It's going to be a, just a matter of next turn, how, how much do we have going on and still being able to shun Poe? Because we're not going to be able to get the Sun Guardian up big enough. Well, 
Yeah, he's going to be a little bit short. So let's get the Legion Rearguard in. Just see, like, every unit that we get to clear out here is going to be um, just more potent for us next turn as our Ravoons roll through. Is he dealing one damage to stuff? This is another time he needs... Gotta be the time bomb, right? Yeah. That's okay. We just gotta get in for like the, the tiniest touch of damage and everything will be fine. <laughs> everything will be fine, I assure you. Is the decimate for that, that that part of the equation if that can turn it around? Meteor shower is pretty tempting here. Maybe do we just want to go for the big value plane though with the traveler? I, I don't, I don't really feel like I want to go for the value plane here. I mean, I guess what he's trying to do. Well, he's too far away from activating the. Uh, Rockfall Path, right? If he plays a summon, it's going to hit the Sarcophagus, but... Destroyer. Ow. So what can we do here? I... I I'm leaning towards, like... Yeah, I was not expecting such a big unit. So if we say Shunpo Chip attack, he blocks Ravoon, we're a damage short. But I, don't, I just don't feel like that gets us there. I'm looking towards, well, I think we now need to just kind of say like Meteor Shower the Shepherd and Chip. Don't really want to risk the Zillion flipping though, and the Shepherd doesn't do anything anymore now. So we'll lose the Priestess to the Rockfall, just have Ravoon on board. Gonna have to start getting uh, getting the Eye back into action. Hmm. This one took a took a sharp turn into the into the Badlands. <laughs> I was I was not anticipating a bigger unit than we have coming onto the board. There we go. There we go. That's where the party is. We could play Leona, but um, we can't play the Eye of Raharok. But I don't think he's going to have enough to, to come in and kill us. And then this does give us the nice barrier challenge into uh, the Restored Devout, and it breaks the, the spell shield on the Destroyer. So, fairly safe for the round. And then it lets us build up into the next turn to where we can say, I have Raharok get the stun off of Leona. She gets the barrier and stuff, and then look to drop a Shunpo. Get the double stuns with the eye, right? Since it summons a copy and the, the copy's on the daybreak. Is that how that works? Can't remember. I've, I've run into this interaction before, but I can't remember how it goes. Hmm. That's nasty. Do we have to deal with this now? He's only dealing three damage. We can, like, get out of Zerath problems with, uh, with the Nox and Telstones. Hmm. I don't think I'm really excited about that. But next turn, I mean, we technically don't even need to bank any mana. Right, we have the 10 mana with the Eye of in the Shunpo. It's just we're, we're not going to be able to get usage out of the Telstones unless we attack. I don't want to lose our Ravoon. It's going to come in and strike Leona for 3. Okay, I think this is fine. 
Let's see if he's got that quicksand. Does not. And we should be pretty safe at this point. <laughs> sounds like sounds like there's a lot up in the air with this upcoming turn, but I, I think we're we're about to turn the corner and pop off on this one. Famous last words. Famous last words. But it would be great if he doesn't open attack. If he doesn't open and then we get the stun onto the destroyer, that has to be so good, right? <laughs> so now he's just really limited in what he can actually do. Uh, we can consider dropping uh, dropping Shunpo onto Zerath, then hooking him with Leona, which is probably going to be the safe route here. It looks like he's trying to start popping off with... Um... Oh, shit. I guess he is popping off. That's not good. Oh, we're just dead now, aren't we? That's what we get for not giving Zerath respect. I did not anticipate... Uh... <laughs> I, I did not anticipate all of that damage coming in. Well, there is Weapons of the Lost. Oh, shit, we don't have the mana for it. Okay, well, let's bring in the Decimate. He, I don't think he kills us this turn. Oh, what is this, like, four, five, six, seven, eight off the time bomb? He needs another thing? Okay. Oh, no, that just gets smoked. Ugh. We're just dead now, right? Yeah. That was painful. That was, uh, that was definitely a, uh, a a problem with a lack of experience in that match. I, we we should have just taken down that Zareth, right? That would have made the day much simpler <laughs> if we just uh, if we played the sharpened resolve onto uh, Leona and then went and hooked down Zareth. Every everything may not have been fine, but. Uh, he was certainly a scarier unit than the 5-3. Like, I was worried about that 5-3 just, you know, interacting well with, with Ravoon. Um, and if we'd just taken him down, we had a, a lot more time rolling through. And so, a, a bit of a bummer with how that one went. But it's definitely on me. But here, we're going to take the full mulligan. Up against Rise, we're going to come at him as fast as possible. Uh, not looking to have value 3 drops in our hand. Uh, if they turn around on turn 3, that's great. But... We absolutely want to be presenting these draws to where we put uh, three mana of units onto the board on the first two turns of the game. All right, bird. Get in there. <laughs> send, off, send off the stun to nowhere. Say, I am prepared to combat. Picks up a rune prison. Okay. Hmm, all the bursts. A little, little bursty burst action coming through, huh? That's not very kind. Not very kind. Right, well, hopefully we stop the the big flurry there. We don't have uh, <laughs> don't don't have any real aggressive friends to be throwing on the board here. Solari Priestess is ready though. You can tell she's primed and ready to get into battle. Look at that girl's ripped. She's got fucking cannons out here. <laughs> she's been she's been hanging on hanging out with Pantheon, hitting the gym and stuff. So, hi. Right. She can battle. It's got. The rune prison and then he hits the the weakest one and so he's got a got a pretty aggressive set of runes coming at us that's for certain and what do we got here probably just want written in the stars you can go for fallen comet to try and obliterate some of these landmarks uh, it's uh just a little bit slow i think i'd rather pick up written in the stars and see if we can't spike a katarina Today. 
here. I'm not too worried about getting into the combats. The Fey Folk is the annoying unit that he could have, but I, I think this is okay. Stun on the big Ravoon. Okay. Was that? Is that a predict? Time trick. Gotcha. All right. So here, I just want to get stuff on board. Ooh, he takes a, a pretty, uh, a, a pretty, a, a bold move, a pretty aggressive angle <laughs> in terms of uh, putting the cards into his hand. This is interesting. Like, I, I want to open with the written in the stars. I want to see if we hit a Katarina. If we hit Katarina, then I'm gonna play her. If not, then I'm just gonna. I wanted to just open attack, but there's no real reason to just open here, right? If he plays like a Fey Folk, we can at least try and hook it out of combat with Ileona on the board. But the 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 way that this gets kind of shaky is if he has, say, like a concussive palm, right? If he's able to concussive palm Leona and then block something else, but I think this is fine. Really need to be winning on our next attack token, though. Or just drawing Shunpo. He puts the spell forward, he calls it back. He says, here's the Concussive Palm. Homecoming. Okay. Fortunately, don't have any more cheap bros to put on the board. I'd love to slam down some dudage. So Ravoon gets sent back to the stun land. <laughs> Get in for a nine hit. Not bad. And we'll, we'll just definitely be looking to open attack next turn. Uh, we might find our might find ourselves in that get em space with the Nox and Telstones being able to, to get a shutdown. Hey there, Claws of the Dragon. Sneaking your way onto the board. So I think we're okay here. Like, he he really needs the uh, the the re the recovery. <laughs> he needs the uh, the spell mana return rune to really be popping off on us. All right, well I'm going Fallen Comet. Let's see if he gets that third rune on the board. That's better than just slamming a unit. Like, we're so close to the lethal. I mean, if we, I guess if we assume that he's gonna pop like the Ravoon and the Sun Guardian, we're a little slow, but we'll still have time to play Leona next turn. That's an interesting one, an Eye of the Dragon. He doesn't have flow, though, right? He hasn't played any spells this turn. Oh, he's played one spell. Now that, now that we dropped the Fallen Comet, we can see the spell hit. So he will get an Eye of the Dragon. So we can play Leona. Leona will stun the Claws. We can hook the Lifesteal unit out of combat. And then we still have the mana to... Uh, uh, either Shape Stone or Whirling Death, whatever we want to do. Sharpened Resolve or Whirling Death. And actually just play an additional unit so if we assume like he eats the stun and then he plays a a, a landmark to put a, a new thing on the board the new thing is going to shoot our smallest unit we can then just play the solari uh, stun something else uh, the dragonling at this point seems reasonable i think i'm on board I think I'm on board. I've convinced myself. Yeah, that's a draw one. That's not a... Uh, 
Not a spell mana returner. <laughs> Whatever that guy's called. Here comes the stun onto the Dragonling. Now he can't summon more units to the board, right? So he can't he can't play Concussive Palm and get a dude out of it at this point. Doesn't have the mana to do homecomings. I, I think we're we're good. Throws down the GG. All right. The full amount of value coming at you. The final battle going to game three. The brown elites, the poop joke, coming out here, ready to drop a big deuce onto Rise. And so, <laughs> let's go, fam. Let's see if we can't get it done. Let's hydrate a little bit. Get started. What do we got? Not that big aggressive start we're looking for here. We'll hang on to the Vanguard Defender. Well, that's a little bit better. That's a little better. Let's see, that's some good looking aggression right there. Go get him, dog. Woof, woof. Ramhound in. Ready for a Battlesmith next turn. Mm, drop it all. Thinking about attacking, bro? <laughs> I think I use putting some thought into that. To the, field. to the fields. We gotta we gotta say it. As I, I got confused in some of these previous videos. It says uh to the fields. I thought he would say to the wall. Reminds me of the classic little John song from from back in college when he says, To the window, to the wall. Let the sweat drip down my balls. I'll skeet skeet, motherfucker. I'll skeet skeet, goddamn. Get low. <laughs> that's the that's the remainder. So here, this is interesting in that do we want to uh, attack with the Battlesmith? Little John lyrics aside, do we get to send the Battlesmith in? Like, if he if he bursts down a 3-2, uh, kind of sucks to lose the Battlesmith, but he's done his job, right? He's He's got these stats out here. Now, if opponent wants to, say, block the Battlesmith just to prevent damage or, and keep the unit, he's got this big uh, swig of bros coming at him, swinging in for 10. And then if he just trades with a, a Tail of the Dragon or whatever the free card is, uh, that, that feels like a pretty positive round for us across the board. So I like this. I think this is good. Here comes the Claws, going to block the, the Ram Hound. Because it also leaves us in this space as we... Look to drop Vanguard Bannerman next turn. The the Eye of the Dragon doesn't get the kill on the Battlesmith. Now he's likely just gonna have a dragon, right? Uh, not not very challenging for him to have the dragon, but if he doesn't have it, if he you know spends mana on Rise this turn or something, um, then he doesn't outright win the combat with the Battlesmith. is a spell mana. Gotcha. For the glory of Demacia, For the glory of Demacia bro. And so what I think we're going to be looking towards is we, we have this hand that doesn't have any plays next turn. I, I think we're going to be looking towards a, um, a a champion strength on turn six. So we'll, we'll see if that shapes up. That was a pretty powerful Ruthless Predator, but you, you can play champion strength on your opponent's turn for just the rally. You don't have to be getting the big scout attack out of it. Uh, and I kind of feel like if we're able to play this on turn six, do you know whatever shenanigans that brings forth, and then on uh, turn seven, just open attack and summon Jarvan, that, that should be pretty close to lethal. Pretty close. Do have Daddy Jarvan though. <laughs> that's a that's a that's a tough one in in the sense that uh, do you, do you zig or do you zag? Right. If we just play Jarvan next turn, he, he's sitting there on the board ready and ripe for a homecoming. Uh, but if we play the champion strength, it can get popped by deny. I, I think I'm kind of okay with either outcome. Um, but 
the, the, the kind of question that comes out of it is if we if we play Jarvan next turn and then he has Homecoming, we still get to open on the following turn and have him hit uh, to where if we if we play the, the champion strength, is it just going to be like a complete failure? Let's see what he does here. It's also nice if you drop the champion strength in the sense that... Um, um, if he plays Deny, then he's kinda out of stuff to do. That's not entirely the case here. He's got a lot of mana backed up, but... We're not gonna be lethal with this. I'm dropping Jarvan. And next turn we'll look to get the look to get the king on board. He does some neato stuff here as well in terms of uh, shutting down this dragonling. He also can block rise, and so I think that's okay. But I'm going to look to play Jarvan next turn, or the the king, I should say. Uh, I, I think getting the 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 scout and everything is, is too nice. If something still goes wrong with this turn and we can pop off a champion strength on the following turn, uh, it's nice having that kind of backup out. Now you understand. Enough. This cannot stand. Gosh, and Jarvan two ready to cataclysm. Times will change, but Wonder if we should have cataclysm first. Can't Cataclysm rise, right? He's got the spell shield, but the rest of this stuff. Get these get these dum dums off the board. <laughs> and he does nothing. Alright. Tell you what, yo, I'll take the bait. I'll take the bait. Master it even. But I, I think with this. It's like, he he can't stop Jarvan, right? He has to block something. Jarvan's gonna flip, so he can't just block him with Rise. He's gotta block this stuff down here to the left. His, his Rise blocks aren't good to the left, right? He can Rise block Vanguard Defender. It's not gonna die because it has tough. Not big enough to take down our five health units. I, I think that's hopefully not. Oh, shit, I forgot all of our dudes get Challenger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the nicest way to come in and finish off the game. Just swing with no... Don't use the challenger aspect. Say... Nah, man. Nah, man. The... the It's on you. It's on you. The scout's all we need. <laughs> That's how the best to get it done. That's how the best to get it done. Alan ZQ hanging out at World saying, Watch this, guys. Watch what I'm about to do. <laughs> I'm about to... Just slam them on in. Say, so I ain't scared. We'll we'll remember that as we make a follow up attack. Losing that that dragonling combat was not ideal uh, by any stretch of the word. All right, see how this goes. Get that barrier hit out in front of the tasty Fey folk. Unfortunately, not gonna lethal here. How nice would that have been had we uh, <laughs> had we been able to uh, get the get the takedown on save our unit guy? That's so bad. That's just so bad by every stretch of the wings. <laughs> we could have we could have put his two one in front of the vanguard defender. He'd only get to gain one health. Could have hooked in the eye of the dragon. Oof! Just turn the video off. Save me the embarrassment. But you get excited sometimes, you know? You just boom them. You say, boom goes the dynamite. You slam the dudes in. See if it's enough. I'm coming off of Rise. Did we really target Rise with that? What just happened? Now, that one I, I feel pretty good about, right? We we cataclysmed... Oh, okay, he cataclysmed our Jarvan. Gotcha. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, well, slow down now. I, I feel like uh, 
something is definitely amiss with this. I feel like we might have just lost this game. Um, we uh, we got to face down this rise next turn, and we're only going to have eight mana. I think we lost it by not taking those challenges, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> How better else to describe the play? So he's got to rise, get the two spell, sh get, get the two things on board, and then uh, attack. I'll write my own story. How close is he? Does he have the runes or not? Don't want to advertise too much here. If we go into next turn, it's okay. Um, Shereem and Telstones does not make me feel like he's got uh, got the shard path here. Okay, Rise comes in. It's a lot of stuff though. Shoots down our Cythria. Kills the dude. Okay. So let's take a look at this. Next turn. Let's just lead out with the Vanguard Sergeant here. We can take the big bank into next turn. I I ultimately worry if we go for a champion strength and he has like a recall for one unit and a stun for another one, we're we're not able to get lethal at that point. And so let's uh let's keep this back in our pocket. Otterpus coming through. And a Crank out our champion strength. Oh, he goes for Demacia. Interesting. Now you understand. Interesting. This cannot stand. All right. Well, then it goes. Denied. Denied, opponent. Alright, let's keep the squad marching. I don't want to single combat here. If we, like, pick up a another single combat, or if we pick up a, uh, a concerted strike, then we have the means to take Rise down. So we can pop the spell shield and then play another spell, maybe get through in the combat. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Is this going to be it? Is this our angle? I was going to say, is he leaving our, leaving our five attack unit up and giving us the shot? Giving us the chance? Okay. Okay. Dealing two to the weakest enemy. Take that damage, Jarvan, and you like it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, he got a thing. He got a card. <laughs> That's not good. That's not good. All right, deck, come on. Come on. We don't, we don't deserve to draw it, but let's just draw it anyways. Ooh, the second rise is going to take that plan away from us, and so... I'm not feeling too good about this. I'm not feeling good about this one. I will stand this madness no longer. The Bannerman. Uh-oh, draw in three. Uh-oh, squeeze them cheeks, boys. Squeeze them tight, squeeze them good. That's going to do it. G, G. So that was tough. That was a, uh, a, a set of games, I feel like, that were... Uh, royally punted by us. I feel like we could have won the Zerath game had we taken down the Zerath, and then, wow, I got I got so excited about that scout attack in the last game. I think had we managed to even use the Challenger effect minimally, uh, <laughs> we would have uh, taken that one down as well. But we, we did get, you know, pretty far along. We got up to the eight win space. Uh, we had a good set of learning moments for me, a good set of learning moments for you. Uh, and all in all, uh, a pretty good set of battles at the end of the day. And so that was pretty good. That was pretty fun. Uh, again, I thought that this event was um, 
it was going to be a thing like the the like seasonals as to where you 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 sign in at 11 and then noon you play a match and then you wait 40 minutes and then at at 105 you play a match and then you wait 40 minutes and I, I kind of you know like set up my whole day that that's what we were going to be doing uh, and I absolutely love that that's not the case. I uh, I feel like that makes sense if you are at like an end paper event or if you are doing kind of like a grassroots tournament and you really need to kind of keep the Swiss structure together. Uh, but I feel like for events like um, like the, the open events here and I think even for seasonals, I, I really like the idea that uh, you can just kind of go out there and play. I feel like with seasonals, you you have to kind of like tighten the window up a little bit. You can't just give like the 16 hours to play. I don't know what happens if you get to the end of the day. If, um, you know, you, you decided to to try and get all nine rounds in starting at, at like 7 p.m. And then there's just not enough opponents. Like, I don't know the answer there. I don't have it all. Maybe it can just queue you into ladder players or something. Or at least keep a, like a, a background gauntlet going or something. I know that all sounds terrible, but... Uh, I, I think this format's just absolutely fantastic as to where, you know, even how I did it today, I think I played like six rounds and then I took a break for a couple hours and then came back and played the last five rounds or whatever it amounted to. Uh, I thought that was uh, a nice way to have everything kind of come together. And so uh, I really love this format. It's great. Uh, again, I think in, in terms of seasonals, I, I wish it was like this as well. Uh, this is the way that the, the Magic Arena opens kind of work as to where you play the first day if you get uh, X number of wins, you advance to the second day. If you get X number of wins on the second day, you get the big prize. But you could at least uh, edit that to just going to a top cut, or you could edit it to uh, what I think would be nice is that um, you know everybody gets in with the, the certain record. You play the day two, everybody continues on with the certain record, and then uh, you just have more people uh, at the end of the day in that final world's qualifier. But, uh, you know, as a, a start to the beta season, I, I thought this was great. I thought this was pretty fun. Uh, and I, I like where things are headed because that was uh, pretty useful. And so uh, up to the, the best of my knowledge, you can still play this today for you as well. You can apparently play games on Sunday. Uh, don't take my word for it. <laughs> I'm, not, I, I'm wrong more often than not. But I, I think that that's something that's on the table in terms of... Uh, you can you can play the games across two days, and so you don't have to uh, try and grind out eleven matches across that time. And so, in terms of the open, I think that's great. Uh, in terms of our lineup, I, I think it was pretty good as well. We did run into some issues having to play against so much Heimerdinger Jace. Like I was really really surprised by the amount of uh, Nora Shadow Isles and Heimerdinger Jace paired together, uh, and then typically paired in with Trundlemere. Like those weren't what I was really expecting. I thought that there would be uh, say like Nora Shadow Isles Rise and Trundlemere to where we could just leave the Rise up uh, and like less and less of this is to where like Annie Ezreal is involved or just like the triple Shadow Isles lineup we got kind of lucky carrying our way through that but that's just not what I expected out of this event I I felt like the uh, the, the kind of prevalence of Rise and what a kind of shitty champion that is to have to ban would would really push a lot of those ideas out of the way and uh, there would just be a lot more balanced lineups. And so uh, we, we misread that. I don't know if that was just a matter of uh, just being completely wrong or just a matter of variance in terms of the decks that we came across, uh, especially in the earlier rounds. Uh, but it was, it was definitely uh, bad for our lineup. And so I think the last thing to say about that is, you know, we did uh, quite well against Rise. We, we, we stumbled a bit there at the end. We should have won that final game had I not gotten so excited about King Jarvan coming down, but uh, <laughs> that that aspect of our lineup did work. All of our lineup was exceptionally good against Rise, and I think that that was a a pretty good space to take into something like the Runeterra Open. I think a lot of people are probably just going to go and pick uh, what the top three ladder decks are at the moment, not have too much thought and space put into their lineup, uh, and you should be able to kind of cruise through the first four or five or six rounds or through the O2 bracket and go... Uh, pretty far just kind of picking on that top deck and so i think uh, coming in with the idea to be good against rise and not have to ban him and then just ban out something else uh, was a pretty good place to be and so good stuff i had fun with that i hope you did too because that is going to do it for us today and so hope everyone enjoyed the video hope you maybe learned a thing or two along the way and had a good time watching so this is busted me thank you for being here